What's going on today, everybody? It is Monday. It is March 28th. Man, this uh, first quarter of the new year has flown by. I mean, don't we always say that? But hey, look, let me jump in. want to say a few things about our sponsors, and then let's jump right in because, um, man, this weekend, there was so much going on. We got so much we want to get to, for real. So here we go. Uh, started off with 7 Mile Casino, 7milecasino.com. Listen, if you love blackjack, which I know that's my preferred game, if you like poker, I know they got a great poker room. If you love great food and a great bar, well, that's Sammy's Restaurant and Bar. So Sammy's Restaurant and Bar over here, table games over here, smoke-free environment, seven minutes south of downtown San Diego. That's Seven Mile Casino. And if you're going to play cards somewhere, if you're going to play table games, come to our place, Seven Mile Casino. It's beautiful. It's clean. Great views. And uh, these guys have been terrific partners for us. Seven Mile Casino and SevenMileCasino.com. Speaking of great partners, Alex, how about these um, these Ride One Up e-bikes? I cannot believe the reaction to what we have talked about here in the early days in our first you know month of sponsorship with Ride One Up e-bikes. I've gotten more people this weekend that have hit me up on every platform. Yo, what is the name of the bike that you're promoting? What is the website for the bike that you're promoting? It's like people hear it and then they're like, oh, e-bikes, e-bikes. You know what? Oh, wait, wait. Scott was talking about e-bikes. Then they contact me and they're like, which company is it? ride one up.co slash great friends. That's our personal landing page, ride one up.co slash great friends. That's ours. They track this stuff. So please use that. Now, when you buy one of these bikes and they will ship them to you. And if you've got the mechanical skills to put a couple things together, no big deal. If you don't want to do it, they will send somebody to you. They will have a mechanic at your place. Ride one up.co slash great friends. When you check out, type in great friends, you'll save an additional $75. So thanks to Daniel Urbino for making that additional offer out there. And Alex, I was riding my old heavy e-bike this past weekend, barely getting up a hill. And I'm like, screw this, man. I want one of those new ride one up e-bikes. I got to get I, the one that you talked about that you and Browner were riding. That's the one I want to get to. That's the one to get the LMTD. Yeah. The limited LMTD limited. Yeah. LMTD. That's right. All right. Hey, listen, uh, keep it on rolling here. Hey, tomorrow evening, 6 p.m., we will be at I Thrive MD in Mission Valley. So if, come on down and join us. Now, I know we've got a lot of people that have already signed up for this. Call them 858 240 1497. 858 240 1497. Come down to I Thrive MD tomorrow evening, 6 o'clock. We're all going to get IVs. We're going to do an IV lounge, which means we're going to hang out. We're going to have fun. We're going to have a lot of laughs, and we're all going to get healthy and hydrated. I Thrive MD. Here's the number, 858-240-1497, 858-240-1497. Space is really, really, really limited. So please call today because I, I don't even know if there's spots available, okay? I'm just encouraging you to call so you can come be part of all this. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, other things I'd like to get to today, Mazda of Escondido. Hey, Mazda of Escondido, and I'm talking to Alan, the general manager. This is in the Escondido Auto Park. I know you're getting a lot of people coming your way right now. Um, I am curious about that Mazda electric vehicle now because I slept all over the place this weekend and gas is just out of control. And while it's up over $2 from a year ago, I wonder, is it ever coming down $2 again? I'm really interested in that electric Mazda. In the meantime, my father this weekend down in Florida bought, um, bought a CX-30, which is what my daughters are driving. Um, I was like, dad, I thought you were getting the CX-5. He's like, no, I wanted the smaller one with the cool sunroof, the sporty feel. So now my dad just went out and bought a new Mazda. Come on down, MazdaofEscondido.com, <clears throat> MazdaofEscondido.com. Hey, shout out to Tori Holistics. Grande, I saw that you uh, started putting out clips for our interview from last Friday. For those of you that were curious about the story I didn't want to tell on the radio, I tell it in the Holistic Highlights podcast, which is available on YouTube. It's available on all the different audio podcast platforms. It's an, a podcast that we're producing with Tori Holistics to uh, talk about and meet people in the cannabis industry. It's really interesting stuff. Tori Holistics, you can still save 20% by using our promo code WOMEN. It's only for a limited time because now that the month is going to come to an end, we're going to have a new promo code. You'll save 20% by using our promo code WOMEN. And while there, our friends from Hellman Valley Growers Company, HVGC, HVGcompany.com. I'm helping this company this week with an introduction to a friend who's actually in the cannabis space where they invest in cannabis companies. I'm like, you can't get a better story than former special operator Marines who are now in the cannabis industry helping other Marines with their PTSD issues, trying to get them off of prescription pills, HVG company, hvgcompany.com. Hey, shout out to, uh, to, uh, to my man, Gary Cooper out at uh, Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services, because as people are thinking about now interest rates rising, what does that mean for me? What does that mean for me, the homeowner? What does that mean for me, the guy who wants to become a homeowner? Talk to Gary Cooper, 858-376-1299, 858-376-1299. 
He's got a lot of qualified opinions and he has helped thousands of great friends over the years. And he's helping a lot of them right now. Mountain Trust Mortgage, Mountain Trust Realty, 858-376-1299. And lastly, let me send a shout out and some love to our friends from West Coast BBQ, westcoastbbqshop.com. Alex, I know that we discussed with Brian, he's going to stop by on Thursday of this week, the uh, championship weekend, Saturday, and then Monday's the championship game of next week. And now that we've got our final four, we can kind of take a look at what sort of uh, recipes do we have from these four different areas, like Philly, Villanova, we got to do some Philly cheesesteaks. So we may even send Browner down there on Thursday. West Coast BBQ Shop, westcoastbbqshop.com. For our man, Brian Bushfield, everything you need for the world of grilling. All right, those are our sponsors. We always ask, please support our sponsors, great friends. And let's get on with today's show. Yo, what is going on, everybody? This is Kaplan and crew from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. It is Monday afternoon, March 28th, 2022, and we are just getting onto the airwaves of ESPN 1090, onto the stream of YouTube, onto all the different audio podcast platforms, and tonight between 7 and 8 p.m., we will be on Channel 4 San Diego, part of the Cox Your View Network, and broadcasting on cable TV throughout the state of California. So look, as we get ready to get started here on a Monday, this is where my head was at least around last evening, about 7 p.m., okay? Um, I thought today we would start off with some NCAA basketball tournament because the Final Four is set. We'll have the championship games uh, starting on Saturday night. You got the two Final Four games, and then Monday, a week from today, will be the actual NCAA championship. So I thought, you know what? Um, maybe we'll start with some NCAA basketball. And the fact of the matter is, is that St. Peter's, who was the um, the Cinderella story, making it to the Elite Eight, they got blasted yesterday by North Carolina. And so the story comes to an end. And frankly, the games in particular yesterday were not even all that competitive. So I was thinking maybe we'd start with some NCAA basketball. Okay. Yesterday afternoon, four o'clock in the afternoon, I can't believe I set my day around this, but I decided I was going to watch the Lakers versus the Pelicans because I know that there's a lot on the line right now as everybody is jockeying for positioning, whether it's to the play-in tournament or maybe to even avoid the play-in tournament. And I mean, I'm not the sort of NBA fan that's kind of following every last thing or every last little game and who's playing who. I'm more of a story fan. I like to follow the story of Kyrie Irving is going to play in Brooklyn for the first time all year because they've lifted the COVID restrictions. That's a story. I like that story. The, the Lakers are going to New Orleans. LeBron took the game off against Philadelphia, the game I was at last Wednesday, and now LeBron's going to be back and the Lakers are going to take care of business. And I thought maybe we would start there, especially since the Lakers had like a 60 to 40 lead in the second quarter and do what they do in the second half in particular the third quarter, and find ways to blow leads and give up games. So I thought maybe we'd start some NCAA basketball, maybe some Laker basketball. I'll tell you something else I was thinking about. Maybe we were going to start Padres, spring training, projected lineups, um, just things like that, like, you know, sports stuff. And then I don't know about the rest of you guys, but did anybody last night see on television, this is an important question, the, the way I'm asking, did you see the, the Academy Awards last night on television. Alex Browner, guys, good afternoon. Hope you had a great weekend. Glad to be with you, fellas. But just tell me this. Did you see this happen on TV? Because the whole world is talking about it. It's plastered all over every social media platform. So everybody on the planet is talking about Will Smith smacking Chris Chris Rock. And uh, did, it, did either of you guys see this on TV? No. I would. No. I, I don't watch the Oscars. I haven't. I won't. So, no. Alex? Yeah, if the Oscars start acknowledging movies that people actually watch, right. I'm, I might tune in. Right. But until then, yeah, I have no interest. None at all. Okay, so here's the thing. So it's like 7, 7.30ish last evening, right? And my daughters, my, my daughter Jillian is still home from college. And um, my daughter Jaden is like, hey, we're going to watch the Oscars tonight. We're having a little sister Oscar party. So Jaden, Jillian, Julia are all sitting around watching the Oscars and I'm sitting there as well, but I'm not, I'm not really watching it's on television, but I'm not really watching. I don't have any interest in it at all. Chris Rock is on stage. This I'm watching on live television. Chris Rock is on stage 
And again, I'm not listening. I don't think the volume was very loud. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's being said. And I see Will Smith walk on stage and I see the slap. And I think, because uh, remember, the, the sound is off. I'm not rewinding and I'm barely paying attention. I'm like, okay, they did some kind of a bit. That's funny. Let's move on, right? So then I wind up going out to grab a bite to eat and I turn on my phone. Like I open up Twitter and I see what's going on. I'm like, oh my God, the whole world is talking about this. This was not just some comedy bit, you know, some fake slap. Uh, this actually happened. So then I hear it and I watch it and I see the unedited version, et cetera, et cetera. Can I just tell you guys something? I don't know why. I do not have any understanding of why I'm feeling the way I'm feeling. And I know, Alex, you'll probably ridicule the hell out of me for what I'm about to say. Browner, I think, might actually feel me on this, though. I don't know why, but I'm really, really, really upset about it. <laughs> I mean, I don't know Will Smith from a can of paint. I don't know Chris Rock. I've never met the man before. I love his comedy. I think he's brilliant. Okay. Um, I'm a Chris Rock fan. I, I, I can say I'm a Chris Rock fan. Will Smith? Eh. All right. I mean, I acknowledge what a brilliant career the guy has had. I get it. Okay. But I'm not a Will Smith fan per se. I don't exactly know what it is inside of my body right now, but I've been, it's like, I'm so upset. I'm so pissed at Will Smith for doing what he did. And, and I, I, I've tried to analyze it from a million different angles. Like, I, I don't know, Chris Rock's hands are behind his back. I mean, he doesn't, he's not trying to defend himself. Will Smith, it's like a sucker punch on national television live. And I was telling a friend of mine last night, one famous black man and another famous black man on national television, which I didn't know at the time. Apparently, the Academy Awards show was produced by a black man. And mm -hmm. the movie that Will, Will Packer. Smith... The, yeah, the, the movie that Will Smith won, he's playing, you know, a, a black man who was a controversial figure at one time. I don't know what it is, guys. Alex, I can see your, your, your grin on your face. I don't know what it is. I am so upset about what happened during the Academy Awards. An award show that was on my television. The audio was down. I was barely paying attention. And most people who are outraged by what they saw didn't see it on TV. They saw it on social media. I'm so upset. I don't know why. Look, I, I mean, Alex, you want to go first or you want me no, to I want to I want to lay down and let you guys have this conversation. OK, great. I'm going to I'm going to act like you're talking about F1. Like the okay. way, I, the way oh. you act. Yeah. That's nice. how much Before I you do, I just want to tell you something. I love the new background you got going on in your home studio there, Grande. I love it. Yeah, finally I, had Mars approval of doing stuff. So this is what it looks like from here on out. This I what love we the monitor. The what monitor? the TV? That there's gonna be a TV up there. He's got a monitor over his right shoulder. What's going on the wall? That's eh, fine. I don't want to put holes on my wall if I don't have to. He's a That's homeowner. Fair. The guy's a That's homeowner fair. now. It's such a what? random part of the room to put a whole mount the there would just be so. Yeah. Anyways. Now what? So so sense. so I I see the the sand lot uh, yeah. over your right shoulder, which is the. And then the one over your left shoulder, I can't really exactly tell what that is. This what? Is a, this is a uh, Kobe canvas Bryant. painting of Kobe Bryant. I believe this is the third one when he was with Shaq. It was a yeah. gift for my buddy this weekend. Uh, I'm the best man efficient in his wedding. This is my best man gift. And I was like, I've been looking for That's a Kobe awesome. canvas art. Mm -hmm. And Mar has not approved one. Mm -hmm. And she, she, he picked one on his own and, and Mar approved it. Yeah, from where I'm sitting, I couldn't really tell. But uh, good eyes by you, Brown, man. That's mm -hmm. a beautiful piece. It's fantastic. That's really yeah. great. All right, so lovely. so Browner, I don't know what mm -hmm. it is, man. I, I swear to you, I don't know. I, maybe maybe what bothers me so much about this Will Smith thing is, is that if if I'm Chris Rock, I, I can't I can't decide if what Chris Rock did was the right thing to do or the wrong thing to do. It was because, the right thing to do. Because let me tell you something. If you go back and watch this, the way Chris Rock first makes a joke, like Will Smith just came up here and smacked the you-know-what out of me. But then he's got to regain his composure. He's just been smacked in front of millions and millions of people. Let Not to mention, I mean, he's been smacked in front of the room. And Will Smith is sitting down there yelling at him, keep my wife's name out your effing mouth. And, and Chris Rock goes, okay, dude. It was a G.I. Jane joke. And Will Smith's like, yeah, 
but keep my wife's name out of your effing mouth. He's like, okay, I will. Because now that you've come up on stage and smacked me in front of everybody, I won't say anything again since that's the consequence. But the way he has to then move on, and you can tell he's rattled, you know? He's on stage. He's standing up there in front of everybody by himself, and he is rattled. But he got through it. I feel like my instinct would have been as soon as he turned away and started walking down that stage, I, I feel like I would have gone and taken him down, pushed him face first off the stage. I, I don't know what I would have done. I'm just, I feel so bad for Chris Rock. I don't know. I don't know why this is upsetting me so much, but it's really got me upset. In that particular situation, I would have to say, I Chris Rock did the exact same thing that I would have done to a certain extent. Now that joke that he thought of, once, once he kind of gathered himself and did the comedian thing when a joke didn't pop in his head to say about Jada Pinkett Smith, he held that joke. And to him, kudos to him. Will Smith is a coward. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk real straight and forward. Will Smith is a coward. His problem is with his wife. It's not with Chris Rock. It's not with that joke. That joke is an issue because that joke just brought the, the problem to a head. But what this joke? Is, Which joke? So, like, Let's get because because the Jane, joke about Will Smith, G.I. Jane, right? Because here's the thing: apparently, she's got some sort of alopecia. Okay, I don't know what that is. It's alopecia. An autoimmune disease. Okay, so sorry that she has it. Didn't know. Don't know that everybody else in the world automatically has to know right. that. Right. Exactly. Okay? So, so when he, so what's the joke? So, it, it, again, that's, that's what I'm saying. It's not the actual joke of we found the star of the next G.I. Jane two, Jada Pinkett Smith. She's right here. She looks gorgeous. Blah blah blah. That's not that joke is not what set him off. The joke of his family now being a punching bag or a meme across the internet happened because of his wife. So the fact that she put them in this situation and now he then turns and wants to retaliate on Chris Rock for something that she did is a coward's behavior. Can you, can you fill us in? Because I'm not really sure I know so, what we're talking about okay. here. Because I think I, I think I. I, I decided I needed to go figure out if there was some background here. So I did Google it. And what I found was apparently a couple of years ago, these two uh, separated Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith. Like they had a, a quiet separation. And at the time she started sleeping around with some rapper guy, her like, son's friend, August her, Austina. Yeah. Her son's friend, a young guy. Yes. Yeah. Alex, do you know about this? Uh, I know about it now. I didn't, no, but like, I didn't know okay. about it last night. Nor did I. So, so I did. All, all I knew is this. All, here's what I, I know knew. this. Yeah. We know way too much about Will Smith and Jada Pinkett Smith. Yes, we real do. Life. And we, yeah. and, and we know that because the Smith. They do it. Yeah. But, right. but here's the thing. But here's the thing. Are, they're not above being made fun of. They're, no, no words, one is. Right. They're, they're, they're actors. They're internationally famous people. And you have another black man on stage who's a comedian. Mm -hmm. who's looking around the room and he's doing his thing and he sees her and, and what was, was, was GI Jane, some piece of art that no one could ever goof <laughs> around about ever again. And the fact that she's sitting there bald, I don't know if Chris Rock knows that she's got alopecia or even what alopecia is. Right. So the fact that he's able to make a joke and that it upset, first of all, if you watch the reaction, he Will Smith first. is laughing mm -hmm. and then she's not laughing. Mm -hmm. And then that's when things so anyway, so Browner, what where where do you where do you come down on all this? So again, the Smiths mm -hmm. are richer than money can buy. Okay, for whatever reason, her career wasn't going at the level of his was, and so she sold their family out for a Facebook talk show, not CBS, not ABC, not NBC, a Facebook talk show where she went on that show and talked about all their family business which turned them into a running joke, all of them, all of them. And so now it's Chris Rock's fault and you're mad at him because the internet had been crushing your family because of your wife's Facebook talk show. So to me, what he did was utterly a coward's move. And I'm not even talking about the slap. The slap is the, the, the smallest part of the thing. Will Packer is a well-known African-American producer. Mm -hmm. that, that show you saw last night, produced by a black man. Will Smith knew he was going to win the Oscar for King Richard, so the night was going to be long 
best actor to a black man. And the time you chose to lose your, your bits was on another black man. I find that ironic. I really do. Because if Ricky Gervais would have made that joke, would he have done the same thing? Hell no. Hell no. So this, it was a terrible night. Mm -hmm. I don't think they should take the Oscar away from him because he no, won not it. About take, not he about taking it away from him. What, you know what they should have done? They should have removed him right there yes. on the spot. They, they should have escorted him out. They should have had security come over to him and say, um, excuse me, but you have to go. And they're like, well, wait, I'm about, I'm going to win the Oscar tonight, or at least I got a really good chance. Oh, well, you should be in the mail up on stage and, and, and smack somebody in the face. You just humiliated the entire show. You just yes. humiliated another person. And frankly, more than just kicking you out tonight, we the police are waiting here to press charges. Because I, 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 I just think what I think what he did was a coward move. He did a coward's act. You're mad at your wife or you're mad at someone else, and you took that negative energy out on a person who had nothing to do with why you actually mad. Yeah, but but here's the thing. Later in the show, when Will Smith does win the Academy Award, and he's crying and he's apologizing, Fair. bro, you, you, can't, you can't apologize with an Keep ounce it. of class to say to Chris Rock, hey, I, I need to say to Chris Rock, I'm sorry. my brother, I am yes. so terribly sorry. I lost my cool. It, I'm sorry. You know, it, it was... I know you're just up here making jokes, and as an as a performer, as an artist, as an actor, I know how hard it is to be on stage mm -hmm. and do what you just did. And I know that you're looking around and and you're just making jokes about people you know. And and see, one of the my friends was saying to me, they're like, "This is all a setup." And I'm like, "Why do you say that?" And they're like, "How could they have had the camera on Will Smith and Jada Pinkett when he was telling that joke?" I'm like, "Don't you think most of this stuff is written?" I mean, don't, <laughs> right. don't you think that they know in advance he's going to say this about her? So make sure you have a camera on her to see her reaction. He's going to say this about him. He's not going off script per se. At least I don't think so. That joke could have been that joke could have been off script. But Maybe. even if then there are 100 cameras, there are like 50 people invisible where you can see them that are contestants because they have a uh, Reese Weatherspoon's reaction, Lapita Nuango's reaction, Nicole Kidman. They, Denzel Washington. They have all these people's faces because they have cameras tuned on all these people. And Chris Rock, I mean, and, and Will Smith was going to win Best Actor. He was right in the front. He was right in the front. So they, they, the cameras were trained on them. If Will Smith had a problem with the joke, man to man, he could have gone to Chris Rock after the show. And you want to put hands on him, Dan? That's when you put hands on him. Because now you man to man, you know he whatever's going to happen is between you and him. But to Dude, do that during a live broadcast, I thought it was cowardice. Dude, Chris really Rock's got his, he's got his hands behind his back. It was cowardice. And the one thing I got to say about Chris Rock, dude, he took that slap no problem. Yeah. He took that slap. You heard it. It didn't, it, you, you knew it was real. He took that slap and stood there, still had his hands behind his Kept back, working. tried to make a joke out of it, um, tried to get his stuff back together, which you could tell it was not easy for him to do. Oh, man. I mean. I hope Chris Rock tell a thousand jokes about Jada Pinkett Smith. Me and too. And Will Smith, too. I hope me he tells too. a thousand of them. I hope other comedians join in. Because yeah. what he did, they, he, they deserve it. They deserve it. I hope every comedian crushes them. Every single one. I have no idea why. I literally have no idea why I'm so upset about this. Seriously. It was so distasteful. It was it was beneath Will Smith to be do that. It was beneath him. When I, I got to tell friend, you guys, dude. Yeah. I was not watching. But when it happened. Me neither. I yeah. when it happened, I I, uh, I wasn't watching anything, so I just turned it on and really was on Twitter. Um, I'm very glad that that happened. That was the most entertained that I have ever been watching an. I don't give <laughs> one rat's ass about Will Smith or Chris Rock's feelings mm. like at all. So to me, as a viewer, I was like, yeah, they should, they should, they should do more of this, even if it yeah. was fake. I was like, this is fantastic. Look, Will Smith clearly has some issues. I don't care. Clearly. I don't know Will Smith. I, I'll never meet Will Smith. I'll never talk to Will Smith. And that's the way we should all approach this. These are people with their own lives. And just because they're on TV and movies doesn't make them like, it shouldn't give them the right to make you feel like you feel, Scott. For well, nothing. how about this? Like, how about, you know but I mean? how like, about this? But, but how about like, like a being above the law? Like, and, and, and feeling like no one can say anything about you. I mean, like to me, what I'm really upset about is like, Will Smith's ego, like, who does he think he is? Muhammad Ali? Does he think he's Richard Williams in real life? Because that lame-ass spe speech that he gave where I'm about defending my family, just like Richard Williams was about defending his family. I'm like, dude, you're a guy. You, you're a black man in America 
in 2022 and with everything that has happened to black America in the last year and a half to disrespect another black man who's up there doing jokes, who's one of the most famous comedians on this stage. Like you're saying, black man produced it, black man on stage making jokes, ultra oh, by famous the way, guy. Yeah. Black man won the Oscar that Chris Rock handed out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Cause wasn't it? Yep. Right. Yep. I, I, listen. And Alex. on that night, by the way, on that night as well, they were honoring Samuel Jackson as a Lifetime Achievement Award. I'm telling you, I, I swear to God, I don't know what my problem is. I don't know what my problem is. I don't know I, either because I, 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 I literally upset. laughed. I literally laughed. Well, I did too. And kept I laughing. I and, didn't laugh. And still laugh when I watch it. Like people are like, oh, that's so cringy. Like, no, that was hilarious. I thought it was fake. I, I laughed. It was hilarious. I laughed initially because I thought it was fake. I was like, that Will Smith's a better acting. And, and I knew it too. Slap. I knew it too. Like, and I'm not going to be that guy, but I knew that this was, would be the conversation on this show, on every show. I saw Stephen A. blowing up on the wrong Will Smith on Twitter. I see, seen like <laughs> so many people. And I was like, this is going to dominate the news for the next it 48 is. hours. Right. All right. Like I it's some see... massive deal, which is right. It's not. No, I know. But I just think so many people watched it that it becomes a big deal. And it then now people have a, these, it is a these think deal. pieces it is a, and these emotions. That See, this is why I disagree have. with you. I disagree with you. It is a massive deal because this uh, this particular award show has been criticized on many levels for not representing all films and colors of people who make films. I think I'm, on, my point is that this show shouldn't be a big deal. No, they're but, handing but, out awards for acting. No, no, but the, but the but I'm telling <laughs> you this and this is what I said to a friend. That's kind of what I'm getting. I'm at. like I'm like black man on another black man on national television. I'm like, I'm and they're like, why is this got to be racial? I'm like, because, because that's the way people will talk about it. All right, we'll, we'll get more. I, we got a lot to get to. I don't know why, but I'm so upset about this. Stick around, everybody. We're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios, and we're just getting rolling. This is Kaplan and Crew. Hey, great friends. What's happening today is Monday. It is March 28th. I had to look up at the corner of my computer to get my date. Well done. Thank you very much. Um, I even know the year. It's 2022. We're in the Seven Mile Are you sure? Studios. I think so. Yeah, I'm almost positive. This is Kaplan and Crew along with Grande and the Brown Man. And uh, fellas, we started today's show. And I, I don't, again, I've said this. I, I actually couldn't wait to get on the air to talk to you guys. Could not wait to get on the air <laughs> to talk to you guys about this. Because I was, I don't know what my problem is. I, I literally like, to, for, to that point, dude, sorry to cut you off. Like, keep going. To that Just point, I really... I, I'm I'm not trying to play a, a role here. I really didn't care. I, I was sending memes and t and texts to my buddy because it's funny. Like I knew that I was like I better prepare because this is what we're going to talk about. I know Scott; he loves this crap. Never did I ever think that you would come on and be like, "I am so upset by this." I am. I'm I so never upset. thought. I thought you would be more on my side. Like, wasn't that hilarious? Wasn't that entertaining? No, yeah. no, I'm not. I'm not, and I'm I'm actually like. I don't know what it is. I and I keep saying that because I don't. I'm really not sure why. Like, have you ever have you ever had an emotion in your You're life? You're like the guy that's complaining to the FCC about the Shakira and J Lo show. Like that's no. the, that's the vibe you're giving me right now. Like, I am not, genuinely I'm not, upset right no, now I'm, no, of no, what I watched on my television. No, 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 no. That's not what it is. I, that's for not me, what it is. Let me ask a question. Are we Go recording ahead. this? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Is there what? no place? <laughs> is there no place where we can't have violence? Like to me, that was the, that was the part about it. I was like, "Come on, bro, really?" At this, like, is there no place where black people cannot just not be violent? Like, what, like, what was, what was, what just solve? What just solve? Like, what was the? Because again, there's an inherent issue of the way black people are portrayed in our society. So my my feeling toward this is a little bit different than Scott's, and it's a little bit different than Alex's. Actually, it's kind of right on with where I'm feeling. So keep going. To me, this image of what black people are to the overarching society. Well, just say it to white people. To the way white people view black people. Right. Are, it's just like that. Can't take them. Well, that's what I'm saying. Look that's how they well, look how a, they act. Well, that's and of, what I'm and of all of, of all the places of all the places. Right there that's where you're right. gonna do that right 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 because because here's the thing if in a basketball game if lebron james and kevin durant are face to face barking at each other 
and one guy decides to slap another guy in the face on a basketball court wearing basketball uniforms in the heat of a battle, right? You'd be like, okay, those are ball players. They get into it, you know. But but when you have two ultra famous, ultra wealthy, incredibly prominent black men wearing tuxedos on national television, where one guy's about to win the biggest honor of his career. And the other guy is so famous that they bring him on just to kind of just just to be somebody to hand out some lame award to somebody, which, by the way, they chose Chris Rock to hand out that award, probably knowing that who was going to win. So like this celebration of blackness, when remember a couple of years ago, there was this Oscar big outcry, so white. right? There, there was this huge outcry about how black America is not being represented. Yeah. And now. Now, here's what white America and Alex, it's funny you mentioned the whole like Shakira J-Lo thing or like Janet Jackson, because when those things happened, white America was sitting in their home going, oh, my goodness. Did you just see that black woman's nipple on television? Oh, there was I a black nipple last night on television. There was. Did you guys? So I tuned in. OK, I, legit I didn't tuned I didn't in because I was like, something's going to happen. I didn't tune in right away. Mm -hmm. kind of did the twitter storm for a while then i was like hey mm -hmm. you want to watch this and she's like yeah we put it on and at the moment it was like the samuel jackson john travolta uma thurman little pulp fiction reunion and mm -hmm. they were happening to hand out the award for best actor which was mm -hmm. will smith and i was like oh perfect timing mm -hmm. there was a moment in his acceptance speech where they just went to the logo of the oscars mm -hmm. and normally when they do that it's a delay right so there's a delay so something's happening on screen and all of a sudden you hear Will Smith. Oh, I, I, I spit. I'm sorry. I hope that they didn't catch that. He didn't like yeah. go pooey, but he like, I guess something came out. What they were doing was they were panning to the Williams family. Mm -hmm. And Venus had such a, a dress that went down her cleavage. If you mm -hmm. Google Venus nip slip, you'll see it on Twitter. I can't show it, obviously. Her left nipple's out. No way. Her left nipple is out. So as Will Smith is having this full-on breakdown emotional speech they're panning to the family that he's talking about and her boobies out not to and mention, <laughs> not to wait, mention. No, wait i'm looking this up. oh whoa whoa, whoa. Yeah, this, is a, this, oh. Is a, this is a whole nother layer of frustration that i have about his actions you were representing one of the greatest athletes in the history of sport in serena williams and you disrespected that family too by taking the night away from them yeah, you won the award, but you won the award telling their story. And as you're giving, as you're paying homage and respect to them, when you won the award, your actions took away from that. I know. So on so know, many, on you. so many levels, man, on so many levels, I'm so annoyed. I'm so, I'm so well, annoyed and I'm so upset by that. You're going to be so, actions. yeah, you're going to be so annoyed when the Chris Rock Will Smith movie comes out in like three months and you figure oh, out I know. this is all. Then I'm really going to be annoyed. Listen, I hope so. I hope so. I hope I, this is a lot to do with nothing. I really do. Listen, Will Smith is a weirdo. Jada, his wife, is a weirdo. Together, they're super weirdos. But they are so aware of themselves and their public perception. To me, because Chris Rock handled it like that, I'm still on Team Fake. I'm oh, going to no, go no, down no. as no, Team no, Fake. No. No, okay, let okay. me. Okay, so hold on a second. So hold on a okay. second. So I had this whole argument last night with somebody also, about it being fake or real. I can also provide some evidence to maybe support me. Okay, hold on. Let me give you my opinion about that. Yes. So I'm having this argument last night with a friend of mine about whether or not it's fake or real. And here's what I'll tell you. This, this was my opinion. Number one, obviously, you can hear the slap. Okay. Now, you could tell me that somebody used sound effects. Okay, fine. We no, get it was a that. slap. But okay. if you watch the slow-mo, yeah, not as strong as you might think. Okay. Well, I mean, it didn't knock Chris Rock down. It didn't really move him off. Didn't his even spot. move. He didn't even right. move his feet. And he and he was and he was standing there Smith, with his hands behind his back. A big dude. Yeah. Who trained boxing multiple times or for the Ali movie, and so he's got training. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, here's here's what I would say though. Here's why it's not fake, in my opinion. There's no way Chris Rock would have them write up a comedy bit and they go, "Chris, Will's going to walk on stage and he's going to smack you." And Chris rocks and be like, and what do I do? And they're like, nothing. You just move on. Like as if nothing ever happened. Like in my opinion, Chris rocks going to say, I'm not going to be like that. I'm not going to have a man walk on stage and smack me like that. And then I'm just not going to do anything about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I just, I don't think Chris it, rock would, would say, yeah, sounds funny. Let's do it. It wouldn't 
it the the reason why I think it wasn't fake, because Will Packer would never allow something at that event of that nature to be scripted. Because again, Will Packer is very aware of the image of black people presented on television in this country. Well, and that's so just it. Is that just think about this though? This is this is why I think I was so upset about it. Is that I feel like with what's happened to black America in this country in the last year and a half since George Floyd. Okay. And by the way, we could back up. I mean, we go to George Zimmerman, you know, we go, alone. I mean, we go back further than that. White people. I'm not, I don't mean to make such a blanket statement, but they're, they, they have a perception of black people, you know, and, and part of that perception is violence and danger. Mm hmm. And, and so now you have this ultra famous, ultra wealthy dressed in tuxedos on national television, these two ultra famous black guys. And one guy is sitting there giggling and laughing. And then in a matter of seconds, he walks on stage on live TV and smacks the other dude in the face and then goes and sits back down and tells him, keep my wife's name out of your effing mouth. When your wife's the I one just, who puts your name out there like that, dude, dude, I just wife's yeah, the dude, one that puts your name you in the are, toilet. Literally, like that's the, because they're literally the part, explaining why this sounds so fake. That, but listen, as, as play by play, you're ex exactly why this sounds so fake. The the reason, and two, the aftermath of Denzel Washington. I don't know if you guys have seen this part. I but did. The aftermath of Denzel Washington and Tyler Perry talking to him as he's crying on the side of the stage after what had happened. Like, it, it, again, man. Where is Denzel Washington to console Chris Rock? Oh, he did. He did. He did. There's a picture of him talking to Chris Rock, too, on the stage. I'm assuming after the commercial had happened, once the commercial mm -hmm. broke, Denzel Washington went up to him first and just kind of talked about it and then pulled Will Smith to the side. And then him and Tyler Perry talked about it with him as well. And at that point, you could see Will was crying. And so I don't, I don't know, Alex. I mean, this the, the notion of it being fake. Not fake. I, I don't. I don't think it was fake. And if it was I, fake, I'm definitely going to the movie. Could you imagine? Could you imagine if 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 I think it was uh, Stephen A. Smith who said if that was Dwayne Johnson up there who made that exact same joke? Is Will Smith going up there and putting hands Dude, on oh, Dwayne Johnson? Regina Hall, who's a black actress, mm -hmm. made an open marriage joke like 30 minutes before Chris Rock did about Will Smith and Jada and Jada Pinkett. Mm -hmm. Was there a reaction there? No. Will Smith was laughing his ass off at that joke that Chris Rock said and laughing his ass off at the one Regina Hall said. This is fake. There is a TikTok. <clears throat> because I'm a young person that goes on TikTok. Mm -hmm. I was scrolling yesterday. Mm -hmm. I don't follow Will Smith on TikTok. I know he's on TikTok. I don't follow him. Never have even seen one of his, tweet his TikToks pop up on my For You page. I'm scrolling last night going. And what pops up? Oh, Will Smith's TikTok with Jada Pinkett. Four hours before that oh, event. I saw, I saw this, bro. That's, that's a term that's, that's commonly it. used. Now you sound like an old white man, Mr. TikTok. Me and at Jada Pinkett Smith let's got go. all dressed up to choose chaos. And I'm going to play you the TikTok. You tell me. Good morning, everyone. God has let me live another day, and I am about to make it everyone's problem. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Look, man. Look, man, I know what chaos means. Yeah, I'm just telling you. That's a very you. common use phrase. Stop it's just, it. I'm putting it all together. You stop it. I'm putting it all together as a true detective here. Okay. All right, Sherlock TikTok. Because I am trying to bring levity to the situation that you two old men took some offense to. I'm, I'm like, honestly, Sorry. like, get off my lawn. I tell you. I get browner. I get what you're saying. As a black man, I completely understand what you're saying. The representation that you guys have been wanting and that now you're getting, it ruined that moment. Totally get that part of it. Never thought of it that way until you said it. And as someone who is a minority himself and has and Mexicans have had great success from directors recently at the Oscars, I get that prideful sense that you're finally being recognized for the work as a minority because Mexican directors for like four or five years in a row won Best Director at the Oscars, and it was a big deal to Mexicans. So I totally get where you're coming from. I just choose to want to believe that this is all fake. Okay. Well, I don't know. Because what it if it's not, it's a, it's a Sad. poor, poor look for Willie from Philly. Well, what about, what about for Chris why Rock? Mama sent is, him I, out there. I, I think this is why I'm so upset about it. I feel like Chris Rock stood there, hands behind his back, took that smack. And now 
He's got to hurry up and try and get it all back together live on stage. And the way Chris Rock is like, man, Will Smith just smacked the you know what out of me. And then he kind of is like looking to his side and he's like, that's like the greatest moment ever on television. People laugh. I mean, because there's a lot of tension in the room. Right. But then you can tell Chris Rock is like, so I'm here to present a uh, best documentary or I mean, wait, the Oscar for documentary and let's just, oh, let's just go to the, because, because it's pre-recorded. So he goes, let's just go to the nominees because that kind of gives him a, ch a chance now to catch his breath off camera, you know? And I just felt, I guess maybe what's bothering me is as a, as a Chris Rock fan and not as a Will Smith fan is I feel like Chris Rock comes off looking like, like he just stood there and let another man just put his hands on him. Nah, I see, no, 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 no. Because even if I, I thought he was it that way, I thought no, he was the so? coolest guy in the I room. I didn't see it that way. If you it's so? real, okay, good. I have never, yeah, I I've never thought a guy was cooler. If that is real, mm -hmm. he handled it in the coolest, most like chill way of all time. Dude. If it was, if that was real, if that, if that's the word I'm about to use. If that was real, Chris Rock is the most professional person working in any business. Because here you are. I mean, he's professional. Like, hey, if I lose this job, I'm gonna be homeless. Cause this man just slapped me in customer service, and I ain't do nothing. So he clearly is a higher professional and more in tune to what was happening of the night than that clown Will Smith was, who so, will forever so I guess, be a clown. So, so what happens now? You know, like, like the next time they have the ESPY awards and there's a comedian um, doing can't tell a joke. Jokes. You can't, you're not allowed to tell jokes anymore because people get so offended by jokes, you know, that what are you going to do? You're going to have somebody, LeBron James doesn't like the fact that you're telling a joke about how bad the Lakers season was and he walks up on stage and smacks you in the face because that's now the norm at, at all these shows. Let me say this too. Let me say this too. It's directed at her. Her. His wife. Jada, Jada Pinkett. Pinkett? Smith. Yeah. They're, they're directed at her. If y'all can't take a joke, don't go. Don't go. He still would have won an Oscar. He could have accepted his award from home. Don't go. If you're going through something medically and you're uncomfortable being out in public, don't go. Don't put yourself in a position to be talked about. Don't go. But instead, if, 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 you, if you're going to be a celebrity, and if you're going to enjoy all the victories of being a celebrity, some of the spoils will come to you as well. And when you put all your life's business out there for consumption in the rumor mill for a Facebook show and you embarrass your husband, an international megastar, your life becomes a joke. And so you yeah, you know what you're signing up for, right? You know you, what you're signing you up knew. for. You're sitting front row, center, center stage, front row. In front, of one of the greatest, in front of one of the greatest comedians of all time. I think it was a comedian hosting too, right? Amy Schumer. Yeah, Amy Schumer. You knew right. what was Sykes. coming. Right. Yeah. And I hope if this is I real, it's fake. I'm I not convinced. It's fake. I'm not convinced it's, it's real. If it's real, I hope that Chris Rock never gives Will Smith the pleasure or honor or whatever you want to call it to do any sort of sit down interview about this. I hope Chris Rock mm -hmm. never lets Will Smith try and regain his reputation as yeah. and, and and do this apology with oprah on air i hope that never happens i hope right. chris rock never even addresses it and just moves on and makes will smith look like the dick i mean i just was surprised like i, I kept thinking to myself i don't know about you guys i kept thinking this to myself if i were on a stage not that I feel like I'm going to be invited to the Academy Awards anytime right. soon to, uh, cause, cause for me, they, I'd be, I'd look over at Jada Pink and Smith. I'm like, I'm not sure I know who that is exactly. But <laughs> if, if I were on stage long and somebody set it off, I know. Years long from that movie. Time, long <laughs> if, I, if I were on stage and somebody came up and did that to me, you know, like what would I do? You know? And, and I'd rather, I would have cursed a lot more. That's for I, sure. Right, I would have rather, I'd rather like, as he sat down, he goes, keep your my wife's name out your out of your mouth. I'd be like, yo, man, um, like, like, what are you like? You, are you guys too rich and too famous that no one's allowed to make poke fun? I mean, really? Like, I I feel like I know me, I would have like gone at them on stage. Like Chris Rock, for he him did. to not he had a joke. If you watch it, if you watch it, once he slapped him and he yeah, went down, he Chris like... Rock kind of gathered himself. He had a joke. And he, for whatever reason, he held on to it. He held on to that joke because I guarantee you it was going to be about that bull who she had sex with. All right, let's see it. Let's let's see what happened here. 
Okay. Alex is going to play it. All right, let's, let's see this. this is- Jada, I love you. G.I. Jane 2, can't wait to see it. All right? <laughs> <laughs> it's, that, was a, that was a nice one. Okay. <laughs> oh, wow. Wow. Will Smith just smacked the out of me. Will Smith just smacked the out of me. Will Smith just smacked the out of me. Wow, dude. Yeah. It was a G.I. Jane joke. G.I. Jane no joke that done this. I'm going to, okay? <laughs> oh, I could, oh, okay. Right there. <laughs> that was a. Yeah. Greatest night in the history of television. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he, you're right, brother. He, he had one ready. He yeah. had one ready. He had one ready. He's like, man, he'll come up here and beat me down. That's why I take my hat off to him because he's a professional. He could have mowed that man. He could embarrass. He could have embarrassed Will Smith for eternity with jokes. Right. Eternity. Yeah. yeah. But he chose plenty not of, to. Plenty of ammo. Yeah. And then and then the, the <laughs> videos of Will Smith afterwards at the Vanity Fair party jamming and dancing like nothing ever happened. It. What a it's fake dick. dude. What a jerk. And then like yeah. he used the speech as like, oh, Richard Williams was a a crazy Protector defender of his family. Of his family blah Richard blah. Richard Williams was a dick, and everybody that's, hated yeah, bro. him. Yeah, that sounded yeah, bro. like that speech. I don't care. He's an actor, okay? So when people are like, oh, he was crying. He's a freaking actor who just won the Oscar for best actor. So when people are like, oh, he was crying. Who cries like that, by the way, in a lot of his movies. Yeah, where he just like tucks his lip in and then all of a sudden like one tear comes out. It's beautiful the way he acts, but still. So people were like, oh, he was crying in the commercial break. It's acting. Dude, he should have he should have been escorted out at that moment. The Academy Awards should have said, get him out of here. And by the way, he should have been like, he really should have been arrested for assault on the spot. Now, I know I sound like the old guy here. I sound like an old white guy. You know, I'm just telling you, like, I just kept thinking about it from Chris Rock's perspective. Mm-hmm. How could you let that man do that to you? He and did, I, I'm with you, Browner. He, he declined to press any charges to the LAPD. So according to reports, the LAPD yeah. went up to Chris Rock and asked him if he wanted to press charge. He said no, because it's yeah. fake. And, uh, <laughs> and yeah, dude, it was <laughs> the whole thing. I, I wish I watched it live, man. I yeah, really I watched it live and didn't really know what was going on until later. I think no one did. Right. No one yeah, did. Right. All right. All right. Hey, look, we're in the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. If you love blackjack and poker and table games in a smoke free environment, just seven minutes south of downtown San Diego, come on down to our place, Seven Mile Casino. If you love Sammy's Wood Fire Pizza, and they got restaurants all over San Diego, they got Sammy's Restaurant and Bar now inside Seven Mile Casino. So, look, if you want to play table games, if you want to have fun, if you want great food, great booze, this is the place to be because it got it all in a completely smoke-free environment in a beautiful environment. I say beautiful like 10 times Um, because it's great. I love it. And I invite you to come on down. Seven Mile Casino, sevenmilecasino.com. All right, let's get into some other stuff, like some sports stuff. Stick around. This is Kaplan and crew on a Monday. Hey, great friends. What's happening? It is a Monday afternoon. We are in the Seven Mile Casino studios. This is Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man. I want to tell you guys something. Um, I feel a hundred times better. I swear to you, I feel a hundred times better today. I I felt so miserable and lousy and upset and filled with like anger and rage. I swear to you guys, I was on fire. And all it has taken is two segments of hanging out with you guys, airing this thing out, talking it out, and I feel a hundred times better now that I've talked about this Will Smith, Chris Rock thing. And Browner, I knew it was going to be me and you today, man. Alex. <laughs> I'm a little surprised that you found this whole thing to be so funny. It's hilarious. You took so much pleasure in it. I it, it upset me. It angered me on so many levels. And Browner, I'm so glad that you and me can bro down on something like this because I'm telling you, like last night when I said to a friend of mine how, how upset I am from a black America perspective, and he was like, what are you talking about? What does black have to do with anything? I'm like, you don't get it, man. Yeah, man. Wake up. You know, yeah, like – uh, Black people of the, of this amount of fame and fortune and and this amount of exposure and dressed in tuxedos, not basketball uniform. I'm telling you, the, this is a bad day for for people who've been you know fighting for the last year and a half. Let's just say year and a half since the whole George Floyd thing happened. Black Lives Matter. You know, since that happened, that movement to have this happen on national television, I'm like you don't get it. It's deeper. 
than right. just some guy smacking another guy on TV. So I, I, Alex, I want you to know, since you don't seem very sympathetic to my feelings today, mm -hmm. I am feeling significantly better. Right. Compliments of talking this out with the brown man. I'm Chris rocking you right now. I'm holding back. Because I want to make fun of, of your feelings right now. But I'm not, I won't. I won't diminish the way you feel. So proud of you. But it's a little ridiculous, yeah. That you're upset about. <laughs> it's called empathy. It's called empathy, Alex. God. <laughs> Listen, Browder, come on. You got to admit, maybe not hilarious, but that was entertaining as hell. Right? What? Scott? The or whole thing. The slap. No. The whole thing. Look, man. Look, look, look. When I thought it was fake, yes. Since yes. you still think it's fake, right? yes. You think it's right. fake. I know it. I feel like I'm not going to say I know because I don't want to say no. I feel like that was real. Yeah. So to me, it means something vastly different. Like I would love to be Chris Rock's PR person today. I want to mm -hmm. see what kind of requests he's getting. I want to see what kind of offers he's getting. Ooh. I want to see what kind of just things he's getting pitched today. Like this, honestly, Chris Rock is hilarious, but he has not been in anything of anything in a very long time. So I think this is going to put Chris Rock straight back into the limelight in Hollywood, dude. You should check this out because I saw somebody tweet earlier about this, and I wonder if it's true or false. I didn't do enough research. But um, I, I saw that Chris Rock is on tour. Yep. And and Coming somebody here. said on uh, somebody said on Twitter that he um, that his show in Boston, I don't know if the tickets were just released or if they hadn't been yet sold out. I don't know. But something like went boom. Like as soon as this thing happened, within you know a few minutes thereafter, shows were selling out. Right. I don't know, Alex. You could maybe check us out. Is, is Chris Rock? Is he? Is that true? Is he on tour? I don't know if you're googling this right up. now. Listen, yeah. and Brown to Boston this to... week. Mm -hmm. Oh, that okay. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Coming, he coming here. That's what I was talking summer. about. Really? This yeah, you're gonna see so many. You're gonna see so many cell phone videos if he ever yep. even talks about this. Oh, I really hope he doesn't, man. This, there's no way that there's no way a comedian with something like that happens to them won't talk about this on stage it's actually impossible. that's the only place i hope he does it on his show on his stage on his terms on his correct terms. right you're right don't let, that's don't actually let will smith and i hope he it. clowns the hell out of both of them yeah don't like, let will, will smith, smith and his wife use you for their financial gain i hope he just starts talking trash about will like for as big as he is he slaps like a bitch <laughs> <laughs> you know i don't know that's funny like that. I, I, it's very funny. I, I hope I hope he just burns them down. First night he on Boston. Don't talk about this. Go to the stage. You go, did y'all see the Oscars? And then just cook them. Cook both mm -hmm. of them. They deserve it. I don't know what you said to me. You just buffered like a mofo to me. Me? I'm buffering. I ain't, ain't buffering. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I felt. I know you do. I know you do. But I felt like you buffered for a minute there. Did he buffer Alex or was it just me? The way it was I'm just you. Things? Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, yeah. Okay. Y'all so, watch so, the Oscars? <laughs> that's I a great watch way you know yeah, what I'm saying? That's how Chris Rock starts the show. That's how he should yeah. start the show. <laughs> <laughs> I do like your idea of a joke. Like, like, uh, man, Will Smith, for a big dude, he hits like a little bitch, and the whole place <laughs> will go crazy. Yeah. Right? You know? Hell yeah. And then Will's going to get all angry, mm -hmm. and he's yeah. going to do a red talk table with his wife. Like, can you believe he talked about us that way? Oh, oh yeah. my goodness. Just, I am so offended. The level of clown. The, the, the level of respect. That Will Smith has lost over the over the last couple of years is just astonishing. It's just a, he he was Denzel Washington. Now Denzel Washington is is that's that's the top of the top to me. Not top of the top as far as gentlemen, as far as respect, as far as class. accolades, class, top yeah. of the line. I didn't even know I, he was nominated for best actor again. I hey, for, for uh, Camelot, I think it was Henry, yeah, one of the Shakespeare plays. It was on um, uh, uh, one something of nobody watched streaming yeah. services. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the clip and I was like, "Oh, I'm not watching that." Didn't that watch it <laughs> is the high of the heights. And Will Smith, before this whole thing with his wife happened, he was up there with him. To me, my is opinion. there anybody? Is, let me ask you a question. Last thing on this: Is there anybody out there who will defend Will Smith by saying this? You ready? Because this, I know this opinion is out there. Well, it's what happens when you joke about some another man's wife. That's that's what happens. Yeah, those people you, are out you, there. You 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 were out of line by joking about his wife. I say to those people, I say to those not on Twitter because I don't have time for that today. When it comes to something like this, it's too too serious. What I say to those people is, 
If you can't make a joke about somebody in our society, public or not public, what are we turning into? If you cannot make a joke, if you cannot tell it, a harmless joke at that, a harmless joke. If you cannot tell a harmless joke that, yes, the person who the joke is about, who's the butt of the joke, may not have found it funny, but that's the life. That's the life of a joke. Dude, you're in the entertainment world. You're at the Oscars. You're famous. People make were making jokes about you earlier in the night. Don't put two and two together of of GI Jane two versus whatever. What is this, that she has? The condition that she has where she's lost Alopecia. her hair. Yeah, don't put two and two together like that. It's simply a joke. That's it. You know, that's it, it. it wasn't so offensive because of alopecia. If that's what okay, we've come what to in our society, was. if we've come to in our society now, we can't joke no more. Then we're done. It's nope. a wrap. No, nope. no, nope. we put hands on it. each other. I did, see an, I did see an athlete t- tweet like. I think it was, was it Marcus Stroman, the pitcher for the Cubs? Yeah, what do you say? He defended Will Smith. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It's what happens yeah. when you talk about another man's wife. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Uh, really? I'm trying to find it, though. Really? Gosh, That's what happened. I, I saw it this morning. I would love That's to ask Marcus Stroman what would he do if his wife went on TV and said she banged his son's friend? Mm. How would he like that? Yeah. All right. Stick around. Um, we're going to get back into sports. What does Nicki Minaj say? She defended him, too. What's saying what? That's a long ass thing, dude. Oh God! Please. Put yeah, out some music. Nicki it's Minaj. out there, dude. It's out How about there. that. Whatever. Put out right. some music. Mm. Anyway, all right. Uh, we are in the Seven Mile the Casino mile. Studios. Seven Mile Casino. I can't com. believe you're upset by this. Very upsetting. I'm serious. I don't know what my problem was. I was very. Did you go upset to sleep like it. upset? I like my whole night. I was tossing and turning. I thought about it before I went to sleep. I was like, I can't believe it's a clown, man. I, I look, was I'm, tossing I used and different turning words, all night. But I used different words, but yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Let me let me let me move, let me move on. Let me move on to a couple other things. Freaking Alex. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm team fake, and I think it's fake, so it's funny. I hope it is. I will keep repeating that. Okay, Brown. I'm on I'm Team wrong. Rock. I'm on I'm on Team Chris Rock, which and I don't think it's fake, which is why I'm so upset. Standing there with his hands behind his back, making jokes, and then having to try and hurry up and get his stuff back together so that he can move on i mean there's a part of chris rock that i'll bet you was thinking to himself you know what i'm gonna just walk off this stage right now screw all these people there's probably another part of chris rock that i mean i would have liked to have jumped down in there and kicked will smith in his face i'm on team chris rock is that is that now the slap her around the world it has to be it's the greatest oscar moment in the history of oscars and, Absolutely. and unfortunately you're right yeah because for you know, something you know, that no one was watching was and no one cared years, about my all of a sudden everyone everyone talking about yeah, it. like five years ago they read the jimmy kimmel read the wrong winner or somebody read the wrong winner that was john travolta yeah that was hilarious but Just now top this one, that numero uno mm. team fake being team fake makes you feel a lot better by the way scott you should go just go say say it was fake you won't team be upset fake. yeah team fake will make you feel better i bet you you're right i bet you're that, right we see you when you're on be good when you're on the, when you're on Team Chris Rock, you feel like you lost, and that's how I feel. <laughs> it's, it's ironic right. that that happened, and then the uh, never mind. Go oh, ahead. Oh man! All right, all right. Listen, let, let's keep going. So, listen. Um, I would like to at some point today, and I'm going to try and do it as best I can right now. Turn our show back into a little bit of talk about some sports stuff, and I'll, I'll do that by saying let's start off with the hometown Padres. And before I even do that, I got to say one other thing. For those of you that are, are hitting me up with tweets and Facebook messages and, and emails, I understand what's going on with my forehead. I, I'm aware. Okay. I'm aware. Are you getting messages? I am. Do you feel like slapping those people? Um, For making fun of your hair? Oh my God. I mean, of course I feel like that, but unlike Will Smith, I'm not going to act on it. You should tell people, leave my hairline out your effing mouth. Yeah, that's right. So what happened was, for those of you that are unfamiliar with Sorry, what happened, can I, make jokes about it? can I make jokes about it? Is it okay to make jokes about it? Because there's, yeah. jokes, there's jokes there, man. Come on. Yeah. All right. There well, here's go. what happened. Let, let me just explain what happened, and then I'll, I'll get back to some sports-related stuff. So the last time I got a haircut, you see this right here. And for those of you that are listening, you're not going to see it. But I always encourage you to come check out the show on YouTube. And then while you're there, subscribe. You see this this like widow's peak thing that's happening in the middle of my forehead right here? See that? Can you very see that natural, pretty well? Very natural looking hairline right there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the last time I got a haircut, I asked the girl who cuts my hair if she would wax that from my forehead. Because <laughs> Can't she, was waxing, she said yes. She was waxing my nostrils and she was waxing my ears. Did you go back to this woman after this? Well, I haven't been back since. Thank God. But the reason I haven't been back since is because I've been trying to let it grow in. 
Now, as a as a byproduct of letting the widow's peak grow back in, my hair is like ridiculously long. So, I mean, I just look like a Q-tip, you know, like just all poof, just puffed up, you know. You need to put the, a used bang, Q-tip. Man. Yeah. What are you saying, Browner? Bangs. Put your hair down. Yeah, like in front of it. Nah, it's not going to work. So anyway, so anyway, so now the widow's peak is coming back. Can you see yeah. this right here? Oh, the everybody can peak. see it. Yeah, the widow's peak is coming back. And I hate it, you know, and that's why I asked her to wax it. The reason that she, that I, I'm unhappy about the waxing of the forehead though, is because the forehead turned into a five head. Because in, instead of her just waxing exactly the right amount, she went back about two, three centimeters too far back. And it just looked as ridiculous as... Well, it looked as dumb then when it was waxed as it does now as it's growing back. I mean, it just looks ridiculous. I don't even know why you thought you needed to get rid of it. That's the problem. Like, it's not like it's just little baby hairs that weren't growing in. You just decided, you know what, this this little peak here's got to go. Mm -hmm. But you can see clearly that it's growing in with the hair. Right? I mean, Am look I seeing it. it wrong? Or I, mean, I don't know like, if you can zoom in on this. I don't know what here. I can't. I don't know why you decided. No one should zoom in on that. Look at this right here. Look what at this. Doing to yourself, is man. this a mess? Look at what a mess. You created you, this mess. You did. I know. This, this but what you. am I going to? But what am I going to do? Let it like grow to the point where it's like six inches long and my widow's yeah. peak is in my you, eyes? First of yeah. all, it was at the average height of the rest of your hair. So therefore, you should have just managed it at the length it was at with your other hair. Mm -hmm. The fact that you had it waxed out makes no sense. Mm -hmm. You you are like you listen. You're like Jada Pinkett Smith. You deserve these jokes. Are you getting a lot of uh, hate for your widow's peak? I don't know if I'd call it. I don't know if I'd call it hate, but I'm I'm getting like like put it this way. I'm getting jokes. Right. Mm -hmm. People are just so insensitive. I know you guys are so nasty to me. You know, making jokes about my widow's peak and how ridiculous it looks. And mm -hmm. now I'm sitting here and I'm doing the radio show. Front but row. Radio show, but Front the radio row. show's got a TV show. And so there's a camera on me mm -hmm. and the camera's looking right at me. Mm -hmm. And I can see how how dumb this looks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Looks like a down arrow. Doesn't look dumb. People telling you it looks dumb. That's the mm -hmm. problem. Yeah. Because if yeah. they didn't say, if, if people told you, that, hey, man, that is bomb. You should, that's a style now. You would be like, yeah, look at this new trend I caused. I mean, it just looks so stupid. But anyway, all right. So how long are you going to let it grow? I'm going to let it grow in. I'm going to let the whole thing just really, really grow in. Did the sun try. just rise in your living yeah, room? Or I don't know. Office? What, well, I think, I think my, uh, <laughs> I think my, uh, you put your hand there. I did. Totally I put my like... hand up like this. And the next thing you know, <laughs> you it changed go. the lighting. Completely. There you go. There you go. There you go. Right? It, like, like changed the light the lighting, went off in there. Yeah, yeah, dude. It looks like the sun literally rose in your office. Oh, man. I know, man. Crazy. Wow. Anything to draw attention away from that thing on your head? I know. I know you're right. All right. Listen, um, I want to say, um, as we'll move on now, I want to get into some of the Padres related stuff because uh, interesting they how the Padres yet? have they won a game yet? I don't know. Because, unlike, like, like here, just to use an example, I wasn't really watching the Oscars last night. I had it on my TV and I saw this thing happen. And I thought it was a joke until I started seeing what was going on on social media. Um, uh, same goes for the Padres. Like I'm not watching spring training. I'm not watching spring games. You know, are you guys watching spring games? No. Why? What's no, the point? I also, I also just realized I have, I have a large issue coming my way for baseball season. I just found out. Oh, Ooh. tell me like, tell me that you've got like YouTube, YouTube TV, TV or something and Padre games aren't on YouTube TV. Yeah, nope. They're not. That's that's I forgot all about that. That's right. Yeah. The only streaming service that's that has. Right. Bally Sports, who sucks, his direct TV stream. And mm -hmm. I am considering switching now. I forgot. From YouTube that. TV. From YouTube TV. How See much now, is direct TV stream? It's like 90. Really? And oh. YouTube TV is 70, if I mm -hmm. have that correct. If I get to that, I gotta cut something else out. Yeah. I know. And I've got and I've got um I've got YouTube TV, but I also have you know regular Cox cable. So you got and, it. Oh, so I've got it. I've got yeah. Valley Sports. You but, got a and, monster and listen, cable bill too, though. Well, I do, and I'll I'll be honest with you, man. I'm surprised. Why do you have YouTube TV and Cox though? Um, is it okay to say on the air? Is it okay to say know. that it's 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 my girlfriend's YouTube TV account? Oh, okay, you're fine. Is that, oh, is that okay? Yeah, can that you thing, can yeah. you do that? Yeah, yeah I like sure. That? You can have up to five people share your YouTube. Okay, TV. all right. Well, that's what I've got. So so here's the thing. I I got Cox cable when I moved, and um, I got this massive cable bill. I mean, massive. And I'm like, what the hell, man? And so literally I had like three cable boxes. 
uh, or four, actually four cable boxes. I returned two of them and I only have cable TV in two rooms in the house, my office, which is where I'm broadcasting from in my family room. Otherwise I'm on streaming now. And in my bedroom upstairs, I put in a Roku and now I've got YouTube TV. Um, and I also have HBO max. That's how I'm watching winning time. Did you see last night's episode, Alex? Mm -hmm. Did you like it? Mm -hmm. It was good. I thought it was good. Um, it's interesting to see what was going on, or at least the way they were telling the story of when Jerry West resigns and doesn't want to be the head coach anymore. And who's the person who's taken over as coach? Jack McKinney. Yeah. And Jack McKinney is coming from, I think, Portland. Yeah. Wh where he had worked for um, Jack, what was his name? The uh, Nicholson. Old Jack Ramsey. Mm -hmm. You know, not Jack Nicholson. And so, um, yeah. So Jack, McK Jack McKinney, that's his name, the coach's name. Yeah. He's like, he's running a tight ship. He's, pushing these guys hard. He's trying to, you know, tell them you don't have a position. You, everybody just needs to run. I mean, it sounds like that's kind of the, the origins of Showtime. Yeah. You know, um, if so I, I remember was, correctly, I think he was only the coach for like 15 games. Well, who so something who happened. Up, yeah. Paul, who, Westhead. Is it, Paul Westhead winds up taking over. Yeah. Who's like his like kind of weirdo assistant. Right. 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 Yeah. They're making everybody a weirdo on that show, though. Yeah. Everybody it, is a weirdo on that show. But but the fact that Jerry West is still around, like he resigns as coach, but he's still part like of the, the organization. It's like the origin story of his consulting days. Yeah. I mean, that's what also Jerry, Jerry West never went back to be a head coach, right? Like He's just been consulting or GM or president of basketball ops, just kind of in multiple places. Out of the way of direct fire from criticism. He does not like the way he's portrayed on that show. He wrote a piece in The Athletic about it. Nobody oh, really? Jerry be. West did? Mm-hmm. Nobody I'd like should be that. happy the way they're portrayed on that show. Well, Wasn't I mean, Magic bad? looks, ma yeah, Magic really comes off. I mean, Magic, the, the way they constantly are like inserting sex scenes with Magic is. Oh, pretty, I believe that. Yeah, no, I believe it. Um, Chick Hearn, I don't think Chick Hearn would be happy with the way he's being portrayed by Spencer right, Garrett, who's going to come back next week. Whoever that dude is that was like the dick on this episode, I forget who he was playing. The basketball player who was just like naked in the locker room yelling at everybody. Oh, yeah. I don't know who, whoever he's portraying. Cool. That guy yeah. didn't come off looking good. They right. made Michael Cooper look like some idiot yesterday, yeah. Yeah. like a like a simpleton, basically. Like it is a very the way they're just making everybody seem it's your perception gets burst. That's for yeah. sure. Yeah. All right. So listen, um, I really wanted to get into some Padres. I'm not really sure. Oh, and then it turned into Padres. Alex does, is not going to get Padre games, which then turned into streaming. Oh, services. I'll get Padres games. Oh, I know you're going to. Oh, I'm quite certain you're going to. Um, you'll find a way. Um, and that all turned in, and then it turned into winning time. And so, all right, listen, when we come back, let's let's talk. I want to talk about two stories in particular. One, the uh, Padres, they actually made a trade with the Dodgers. And we'll get to that story coming up. And I also really want to get to um, the Lakers and what happened with the Lakers. But before we do, I want to say to everybody, hey, if you're thinking about a brand new car, I want to invite you to Mazda of Escondido, Mazda of Escondido .com. The general manager, Alan, uh, who's I, I went and saw Alan a year ago. I said, Alan, I got two used cars. I really need three cars. But the thing is, I don't want to increase my payments. We got three cars that night. I leased two. I bought one. A Mazda CX-5, which is my son's car that I love. I drive this car everywhere because he's away at college, so I'm driving it. Much better on fuel. And then the two CX-30s, which not only did I love so much, but then my daughter told my father in Florida, and he decided to go get a Mazda CX-30. You're going to love these Mazda vehicles, and they've got an entire lineup for you in this brand new spectacular showroom. Mazda of Escondido is in the Escondido Auto Park. Come check them out. They've got a full lineup of brand new Mazda products, including the electric Mazda products, and they're taking your trade-ins. They're giving top dollar. Come on in and visit, and you're going to be very happy with your buying experience at Mazda of Escondido, mazdaofescondido.com. Uh, okay, so let's get to it. The Padres make a move, and the Lakers, I am just, I mean, really. LeBron takes a day off against Philadelphia, rests his body, then comes out, gets hurt, and the Lakers still lose. And we'll get to that story coming up in just a few minutes. Stick around, everybody. This is Kaplan and crew from the Seven Mile Casino Studios with Grande and the Brown Man, and we're back after this. Hey, great friends. What's happening? Today is Monday. It is March 28th, 2022. This is Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man broadcasting on the airwaves of the Mightier 1090. So traditional radio, 1090 AM. Get in your car. Turn it on. Easy. 
We are also on the stream of YouTube. Come to our YouTube channel. Make sure you hit the subscribe button so we can send you push notifications as we're putting material out. Um, also on all the different audio podcast platforms, Apple, Spotify, Stitcher, all the way down to iHeartMedia. I don't know how we got there, but we're there. And tonight, you'll catch up to us on television, Channel 4 San Diego, 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. As a matter of fact, I was down at a restaurant bar on Saturday night in the Bird Rock area, a place called Beaumont. It's been there forever. Very famous place. And my friend's band was playing. Ryan Hiller and the Lost Prophets were playing, although they asked me to bring them on stage and they wanted to be called Little Jimmy and the Lost Prophets on, on Saturday night, as it were. But I ran into Dave, who's the owner of Beaumont, and I've known Dave forever. And um, he said, hey, man, he goes, um, you know, I hear you, you, the show's on TV now as well. And I go, yeah, it is. I said, so why don't you put it on here in the bar? And he said, well, what day, what time? I said, Monday through Friday, 7 to 8 p.m. on Channel 4 San Diego. So I said, are you using cable TV here in the restaurant or are you using direct TV? So he said, well, I'm using direct TV because I need to have all the games to show the games like during the weekends. And I'm like, so no cable TV. He goes, you know what? I think we still have cable TV, too. So he went in the back and he found out. He goes, no, we do. We have Channel 4 San Diego. We have cable TV. I said, so great. Monday through Friday, 7 to 8 p.m. Turn us on. And I would say the same thing to all bar owners and restaurant owners who are big, you know, great friends and fans and, and people who've been with us for a long time. We appreciate you guys. We love you guys. If you own a bar or a restaurant between 7 and 8 p.m., a lot of times you'll have on an ESPN type show and it could be a bunch of talking heads. We'll use the local talking heads. That's us. 7 to 8 p.m., Channel 4 San Diego. For those of you that are in Santa Barbara, it's Channel 4. For those of you in Orange County and LA, it's Channel 118. So, Put us on in your bar, in your restaurant, snap a picture, tag us at Kaplan and crew, and we'll give you a lot of love on the air. We'll, we'll send a bunch of shout outs your way. So uh, I'm, I'm out there trying to do that, guys. I mean, I think, and Tommy Tommy's out there doing the same thing. Tommy Tommy is probably right now leading the great friend's charge. This guy's walking into bars all over San Diego County, and he's bringing them this, this poster that he's created that says, you know, the Mightier 1090, Channel 4 San Diego. I mean, Tommy, Tommy's out there just like our, our one man ambassador team. What do you think about that grande? Shout out. Shout out is right. All right. Um, okay. Let, let's talk about the Padres and what they did this weekend, because this is one of those moves where if you're a Dodger fan, you know, this name, if you're not a Dodger fan, you might be like, uh, I feel like I've heard it, but I don't really know it. And it's kind of surprising when teams in the same division make moves with one another especially one that might help another team. Let, let's go through what the Padres did this weekend. Go ahead, Alex. Take us through this. Uh, they did it this morning. Uh, oh, they did it earlier this morning. Uh -huh. They traded for Matt Beatty, and they gave away uh, an 11th round pick from last year. So pretty much not much is the kind of the I'm point sure there. that guy will become an all-star now. Uh, well, here is what Matt Beatty did last season for the Dodgers. He played 120 games, 234 at-bats. 270, 363 on base percentage, seven home runs, and 40 RBIs. He played both left and right, third base, first base, and DH last year at some point for the Dodgers. He was designated for assignment about six days ago because mm -hmm. the Padres or the Dodgers have a very crowded roster, and that get, that gave them seven days to come up with a trade partner. And here we are, mm -hmm. Padres in dire need of outfielders because let me just show you who could possibly start in left field. You're assuming. It's Will Myers' job in right field. Trent Grisham in center, left field. You're looking at one of these three gentlemen right here. Got Beatty, Jerickson Profar, who last year had a terrible season, and Nomar Mazzara, who not much better either. Where did Nomar Mazzara come I know from? who Nomar Mazzara is. No, no, that's is. not Nomar Garcia Parra. Different guy, Browner. Oh. <laughs> did you really oh, think that mind. was Nomar Garcia Parra? <laughs> at least the Nomar part. Yeah, we're he played for the Tigers last season <laughs> and he got signed on a minor league contract for the Padres. But because they are so desperate for an outfielder, it's looking like he'll be on the big league roster opening day. Wow. Gosh, I wish the Padres, I'm gonna put this out into the universe. Maybe the Padres will be listening. I would love it if the Padres would trade with the Cleveland Guardians for my man Bradley Zimmer who was in arbitration. I think that's how it goes. And he got a one-year deal. You ready for this? One year, $1.3 million. That's it. This guy, right. This, this guy is a hometown kid who was so on the verge of becoming a superstar with the then Indians, dealt with a few injuries along the way, 
But I mean, when you look at this kid's career and his upbringing through baseball and being, you know, uh, on all the USA international teams, I mean, he was one of the superstars of his generation and, and it hasn't elevated to becoming a superstar of major league baseball. But if you go back and you look at all the great, you know, catches he's made, all the big bomb home runs he's hit for $1.3 million. If you're the Padres, go make a move with Cleveland and bring this kid home, especially when you're in desperate need of speedy power hitting outfielder types. So I'm just putting that out there. Can in he the stay universe. healthy? Can he stay healthy? That's a good question. No, that's why you can get him at a good price. Yeah, that's why he's You so don't cheap. want him to be healthy. You yes. want to get him, he put that uniform on, and what happened to that other brother who the pitcher was, going to happen to him. He's going to get reinvigorated. He's going to, you know, Musgrove. Reinvigorated. Musgrove. Well, yeah. No, the, the, yeah. Um, so listen. Musgrove. Um, I, I don't really feel like, you know, the Matt Beatty trade is a big, big deal. But you're giving up nothing to get a, a I'm going to call him an established major league player. I don't mean that he's like some superstar major league player, but you've got yourself now a guy who's been in the big leagues, who's played in big games, who's you know been playing for the Dodgers and has been around a winning environment. And I think it's a great move for the Padres, who are desperate for depth in the outfield. So... I will say that that seems like a very good move to me, at least on paper in spring training. You know, I'm not watching spring training games. I've, I think I, the, the closest I've come to watching a spring training game was I saw a video on Twitter the other day of a guy who's, who's the guy that sells the churros in, uh, in Petco Park, and he's turned himself into quite the character, the churro guy. Did you see that guy, Alex? I didn't. You don't have any idea who I'm talking about? I don't huh? think so. Yeah, he's like this heavy set. That's a nice way of saying, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's a, he's like a, this heavy set Mexican dude who like screams like this churro chant. And then he does like this, you know, that like the, the move when you're down, when you, yeah. you're flopping on your belly, worm. the worm, is that what that move is called? Yeah. The worm? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's like, oh, it's time. What do they call skinny people? Are, if, if heavy set people are, if fat people are heavy set, do they call skinny people light set? No, I don't think they call them light set. I think they call them, um, I don't know what they call them actually. I'm not really sure. Because, I mean, if there's a, if heavy set is a thing, then light set should be a thing. I don't know. I don't think it's a thing. Alex, am I to understand? Do I see that Dr. Thomas Maxey is standing by in our waiting room? He likes right? that. Yes, he is. All right. All right. Beautiful. So I've been mentioning that, and I'll, I'll get back to the Padres. I've been mentioning that tomorrow, Tuesday, March 29th at 6 p.m., we are doing our second IV lounge with our friends from I, I Thrive MD, I'm holding on to a card right here that has the menu. And I'm trying to decide tomorrow at 6 p.m., what am I going to do? Should I get the energy boost? Should I get the um, sleep IV? Should I get the immunity IV? I think I may go for immunity. because Now it's time to ask him, Scott, my oh, question. <laughs> oh, your question <laughs> is what? You don't remember my question? I don't recall it from last week. You'll have to excuse me. A lot's happened. No, it's all good. Then. It's all good. I know you're upset about the Will Smith slap. I um am. Can you do all of them at the okay, same time? Okay, great question. Here's Dr. Thomas Maxey. <laughs> hey, Doc, what's going on, man? Hey, guys, how's it going? My connection's a little spotty here, but happy to be back on with you guys. Yeah. Hey, um, a question for you. We were looking at the IV treatments um, last week, and we were looking on the menu. Energy, hangover, pain, sleep, immunity, stomach flu, beauty, recovery, weight loss. I just wonder, can you put them all into one bag? Can I take them all at the same time? Or... or is that too much? I mean, so there's a limit to how many ingredients you can add into the bags. We don't want the concentration of the ingredients to get too high. So we can combine a good amount of them together, probably about three or four, you know, but we can tailor each bag to your individual needs really, you know, so typically okay, a little combination of the energy and the recovery. My yeah. question is though, instead of putting them all in one bag, not me because my veins are awful, but like, you know, superstar veins down here in the left corner. Mm -hmm. Can you pull, pop them with four, three different vein, three different bags at the same time? Good question. <laughs> Technically, you could probably do that if the drip rate was slow enough, but you mm -hmm. also don't want to overwhelm the cardiovascular system with too okay. much fluid all at once or else you might end up with some crazy blood pressure symptoms going on as okay. we fill you up. Well, I think Browner can handle it. You know, this is a guy that drinks, you know, eight Cokes a day. McDonald's. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can take it. Yeah. <laughs> I can take no, it. I just I heard all the options that Scott was time. reading, and I was like, all of those sound great. Can I have all of them? That's why not. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Dr. Dr. Max, say tomorrow, Tuesday, 
we're going to do this at 6 p.m. in the evening because last time we did it at one o'clock in the afternoon. And you know, it's kind of hard for people in the middle of the day to get down to Mission Valley and you know stop what they're doing. Mm -hmm. But I figure at six o'clock in the evening, let's see what happens. So I know that um, I'm in. I think I saw uh, Michael Ambacher told me that he's he's already signed up and he's in. And I don't remember. I, I, a few other great friends have already told me that they're in. How many total chairs are there at the IV Lounge? We got six right now. Again, if it gets too busy, we can set up some other chairs. Some of the IVs only take about 20, 25 minutes to get through. So we can definitely see more than six guys at a time, you know, and we'd be kind of mingling and talking, hanging out in there. But we do have six massaging recliners, and those are quite luxurious. Yeah, it's really nice. It's like the difference between going to like one of those Sinopolis movie theaters versus like an old school movie theater. You know, like when you get there, you got those nice lounge chairs. What, what are you looking at me like that for, Bronner? If you're going to talk about high-level movies, you got to talk about the lot, sir. Don't you bring oh, them those Sinopolis up in here? Why what is, you doing? Is a lot, I don't know if it's a lot better. You know me. No. I, I barely as ever you know, As someone that goes that has gone to both, I fight back, Bronner. I think Sinopolis takes the cake on that one. What? Yeah, dude. You got to experience it, man. Have you been? What? Have you been? Listen, we got to get. When the guests ain't here, we're going to talk this one out. <laughs> you are some, All right. Well, I, almost, I almost will smith you. Dr. Max mm -hmm. saying, do you? I fight back. Do you know the difference between The Lot and Sinopolis as movie theaters? I haven't been to The Lot, but I do enjoy Sinopolis. Yeah. <laughs> so I can only yeah. speak for one. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I, let me rephrase it. Let me re I can't believe this slander. Dude, it's, it's like the difference between like a Sinopolis and a Regal. You know, yeah. Regal's is a big yeah. ass theater with lots of yeah. rows of seating. Sinopolis has like those super comfy chairs. You lean back. You might even fall asleep during the movie. They're bringing you food. The, the IV lounge, they have those kinds of like reclining, comfy sorts of chairs. Everybody's all mm -hmm. kicked back. And I'll tell you, man, we were having a great time last time because you had fat Tony telling stories about how he hooked up with Eric Weddle after the NFC championship game. You had all Tommy. Tommy was discussing his, his game show. Michael Ombacher was pitches. a part of all of this and Al long and uh, you know, and, and Louis Zapata, the, the whole team was there. So I don't know how many signups we have so far, but I, I mean, it, it's very, very limited space. So eight, five, eight, two, four, zero, 1497, eight, five, eight, two, four, zero, 1497. Call the office and say you want to be part of the Great Friends IV Lounge. And tomorrow mm -hmm. evening at 6 o'clock, we'll be sitting around probably watching games and talking about stuff and having a great time. Doc, what should I get tomorrow? What, what, what IV do you think I should get? We'll probably – I'm going to get you uh, the immune boost with a little extra goodies in there just to get you some better sleep and energy the next day too and get you feeling fresh when you wake up. I want immune boost, and I, I, I kind of want weight loss. Um, yeah. Because I, I definitely... Do you have one for hair growth? Yeah, we have the Beauty IV. So that actually has biotin in it. So that's going to help your skin, hair, all your your, collection, yeah, your nails. It's not a bad idea. Because, Doc, if you look right up here, you see this widow's peak right here? <laughs> I had my I girl... Um, I had her, like, wax it last time I got my hair cut. And now I'm trying to let it grow back in. So maybe I should have the Beauty IV also. Because then maybe my hair will grow faster. There you go. Definitely. Yeah, we can mix those together. No problem. Now I'm starting to work on my beach body, Doc. You know, it's 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 about to be April, so I've got April, May, and June. I got to get my my beach body right. You know, I got to get my eight pack which, back. Which beach? Which beach? The Black's Beach or the uh, Pacific Beach? <laughs> uh, just 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 uh, either both. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they can have you looking good at Black's Beach too, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. I do. I do. Ew. It was right, uh, <laughs> Doctor Thomas Maxey from I Thrive MD. Hey, Doc, we'll see you tomorrow evening at six p.m. Yep. Excited to see you guys. It's going to be a great time. And yeah, we'll get everyone taken care of right All when right, we get man. here. I'm looking forward to it. Tomorrow evening, 6 p.m., I Thrive MD, 858 240 1497. 858 240 1497. That's really like the great friends hotline to I Thrive MD. Call them, make an appointment, and I will see you there tomorrow at 6. Browner and I are both going to be there. And uh, Alex, I don't know what he got going on, but he's, he's at, well, it's just they, they can't find his veins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. No, that's yeah. right. The, the Lakers are playing. I'm going to have the game on my phone. I can tell you that right now. Yeah. Hey, Doc, we'll see you soon, man. Later, guys. Later, dude. See you, Thomas. All right. Doctor stopping by for just a couple of minutes. All right. Where were we? No, no, Padres. No, 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 no. Ain't no, ain't no, ain't no, where were we? No, to the hell with no, where were we at? How in the hell can you sit on this show, sir, mm -hmm. and say Sinopolis is better than the lot? How? The food at Sinopolis is terrible. Wow. Oh. Talk about slander. Wow. Well, 
And the seats are better. The seats are at lot. Where is the lot? Tell me where the better. lot is. Tell me where the lot is. Is that the one in La Jolla, like UTC area? There's two of them. No, no. Starlight is the one in, in at uh, UTC. That no, one. Is I don't mean terrible. the mall. I mean across the street from the mall. Is that the lot? The one over by? Um... No, no, no. The lot. The lot that's in La Jolla is behind the Vons. Behind. It's on. Pro it's like it's right. It's right by uh, oh, the comedy store. You know what? You're exactly right. I know exactly mm -hmm. where it is. You're right. Okay, gotcha. And then the other one is in uh, um, uh, Point Loma. Oh, really? Liberty Station. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, There's never two been of them one. locally. Mm -hmm. So th those are the best theaters in town. The sound is great. The chairs are great. I've been to Sinopolis many a times. The first time I went to a high-level theater was the Sinopolis. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is nice, man. And then I went to the lot, and I said, like, no, this is it. So I got to tell you, uh, for me, it's this simple, Browner. Uh, there is way too many seats at the lot. I think when you go to one of those like higher end movie theaters i like less mm -hmm. people around me and i went to the one in la jolla to watch the joker and it was packed and it felt like it, it was packed whereas sinopolis also sold out but didn't feel like i was packed in some like a sardine that was my biggest to me that's what i cared about the most the seats okay. were lovely the service was fantastic popcorn was on point the lot my, not my favorite popcorn so for me, okay. I just don't like how many seats are in the lot. They're huge theaters with great sound, but you're really packed in there. Whereas Sinopolis is more spread out. You can, you know, spread eagle if you'd like. I can respect that. I can respect that. Yeah. I can respect I that point I, of view. I will tell you this, that um, I was at Sinopolis in Carlsbad. I guess, I think there's... It was like eight years ago? No, no. This was, <laughs> this was not long ago. In fact, this is going to bring me to another thing I wanted to talk about today, but I... What were you saying? Independence Day? No, but hold no, on. You know, I'm not seeing Will Smith movies. You know, I'm, I'm now Never posted. Um, I'm, Boycott. In, in fact, Never in again. fact, you ready for this? One of my favorite Will Smith movies, Bad Boys with Martin Lawrence. Mike Lowry. Okay. I'm done with that movie. Done. Woo. I am done with it. Woo. You know? Woo. So here's the thing. I was going to watch King Richard. Nah, now I'm not. Me too. I'm, I'm not, not now. Watching, I will. I'm not watching I'm not King watching Richard. I'm out on I'm King good. Richard. In fact, in fact, I'm not even a Serena Williams fan anymore. Woo! Yep. That's how far I'm taking this thing. That's how far I'm taking this Will Smith mm. thing to the edge, huh? to the to the total edge. Are you a Venus Pete? fan? No, I'm not well. After I should be. Flip? I should be a Venus parts. fan. Yeah, only parts. parts. <laughs> okay, so listen. Let me just say this. I was I was at Sinopolis in in uh, Carlsbad. I think I do believe there's two Sinopolises in Carlsbad. This is the one on like La Costa, like a little bit n further north of La Costa Avenue. Anyway. Um, I went to see Studio 666. This is the Foo Fighters movie. Oh, yeah. Now, the funniest scene in the entire Foo Fighters movie is when Dave Grohl throws the cymbal at his drummer and his best friend, this guy Taylor Hawkins. Spoiler alert. Well, I didn't tell you what happened. I just told you he threw a cymbal at him. You, you just said he cut his head off. I didn't say that. No, you no did. I did not say that. You've said it before. Mm. But it's okay. I, I did not just say that. You just said that. You have... You said that before on this show. I did. You're, that's right. <laughs> but in this particular instance, when Alex <laughs> yelled out, right, when Alex said spoiler alert, I just wanted to be okay. clear that as of right now, that was not my spoiler alert. Hey, weird thing, okay. you know, as, as this as today's Monday, but on Friday, when the news started to break that Taylor Hawkins at 50 years old, I mean, this is one of the best rock and roll drummers there is, but he's also a big personality because he's also a front man. I saw the Foo Fighters at the Super Bowl in Atlanta a few years ago, and they brought out the drummer from Queen. Hawkins gets off of his drum kit. The drummer from Queen gets on, and Hawkins is doing his Freddie Mercury uh, as a front man. A couple years ago, 2019, at Kaboo, the Kaboo Festival at the Del Mar Fairgrounds, before they screwed that whole thing up. Love that, that was thing, an man. awesome Love festival. That they oh. screwed that whole thing up by making their declaration Three. that they're moving it down to Petco Park disaster um but taylor hawkins he was singing with his band on like one of the small stages so foo fighters performed on a big stage they were a headliner but the um but taylor hawkins was performing on a tiny little stage um just kind of like a one of those off the beaten path kind of stages so i feel i, I just couldn't believe when i read this story about 50 years old and the dude died now you know i was talking to uh Toby McDonald from uh, from Rock and Wine Tours, he posted a picture from like 30 years ago when they were little kids and working in like record stores, Taylor Hawkins with Toby. So it's just a sad story. Um, 
somehow movie theaters turned into Sinopolis, turned into Foo Fighters, turned into their drummer dying. It's just, I don't know. That's he just found so much stuff here. in his system too. Oh, is that the case? Yeah. What'd they was, find that? I hadn't read about that yet. Yeah. The, well, the Colombian attorney general released, cause they were down in Bogota for a South American tour. Yeah. Uh, they found THC opioids, antidepressants and alcohol. Wow. Wow. That's terrible. Yeah. Unfortunate. Oh man, I know, man. What a crazy weekend on fr on Friday, Taylor Hawkins on on Sunday, Will Smith and Chris Rock, Smith. and but not his career. No, but in, and in between, in between, there were some Padres things that went on. Alex, you mentioned this morning the trade, and then mm -hmm. the Lakers yesterday down in New Orleans. I want to get to that story coming right back. Oh man, I, this show today Monday, I knew I was going to be an emotional wreck. I knew it, and and as a result, the show is just <laughs> off the rails. Stick around, everybody. With Browner and Grande, this is Kaplan and crew from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. All right, great friends. It is a Monday afternoon here on Kaplan and crew along with Grande and the Brown Man. We come to you from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. Uh, hey, Browner, before we get started here and before we talk to our next guest, because Anthony Irwin is about to join us, he runs all the podcasting at silverscreenandroll.com. That's where Grande does his Taco Tuesday Laker podcast. Hey, I just want to ask you, did you uh, did you spend your weekend e-biking around? Did you find yourself into some new adventures this weekend? Yeah, man, you know, I hopped on a bike and took a little ride, 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 ride around town. Yeah. You go anywhere? What? Yeah, I went to. So <laughs> I don't know what I that meant to either. Do. I have no idea what that <laughs> meant. I tried to ride the PB, mm -hmm. but the route was very complicated. So I ended up just sitting at a Starbucks and charging the bike back up to make it back safely. Really? So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna try again with a better route because the construction, the route got super weird. And then at that point, I didn't want to chance it by going that far and then having to actually lose my real legs to come back. <laughs> so you, yeah. you took the you took the battery charger with you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and oh, I always take it with me because you know you never know how far you want to go once you get out there. So I got out there, I realized when I got near the eight, crossed the eight, and I was like, wait a minute. Uh, how am I supposed to get there from here? Cause in the streets, I lost I lost my green lane. I'm gonna be frank with y'all. I lost my green lane and I lost my confidence. I lost my confidence. There's a lot of cars whipping around out there, man. I need my green lane. I need it. <laughs> Alex, have you talked to Daniel Urbino, the CEO of Ride One Up, to find out if and when you and Mark can get some demo bikes? Because you said you need to buy one. No, you need to buy two. I know. No, I, I, I'm i trying to push back putting Mar on one of those bikes because I know the moment that she gets on one, I'm buying two. So I'm just pushing that back a little bit because I have not talked to Daniel about it ever since my test ride in Balboa Park. Yeah, I know. I, I will tell you this. So um, these ride one up e-bikes, I got so much reaction over the weekend from people saying, hey, dude, I heard you talking about an e-bike company on the show. I heard you talking about all these great discounts on the bike. What's the name of the bike again? So this this cracks me up because people will hear us talk about sponsors and brands and it just goes in one ear and out the other until you need that sponsor. Ride one up dot co slash great friends. Ride one up dot co slash great friends. That's our personal landing page. They're monitoring all the traffic that we bring to their website. When you buy a bike through Ride One Up, you put in great friends at checkout, and right now you'll save an additional $75. Now, listen, I've told this story. I bought two e bikes two plus years ago, paid over three grand for each of them, actually sold a car to buy the two e bikes. And they're so big and heavy that yesterday I was coming up this hill in my, in my neighborhood and I looked down at my speedometer and I'm doing four, almost five miles an hour. When I was on the ride one up e-bike, I was doing six and seven miles an hour because the bike is 10 pounds lighter. And then you got my fat ass on the bike. So look, just go to ride one up.co slash great friends. If you're thinking gas is too expensive, I'm doing too much little, you know, running around town, running errands. I'd rather have an e-bike where it's not costing me anything. These bikes are the highest quality for the lowest price that you're going to find in the e-biking market. Rideoneup.co slash great friends. All right. Anthony Irwin is here. He runs all the podcasting at silverscreenandroll.com. That's where Alex has his Laker podcast on Tuesday nights. Anthony, good afternoon, man. Welcome to the show. Glad you're here, dude. Thanks a ton for having me. And, uh, and, and thanks as always to Alex. It's the Taco Tuesday podcast, but like for the last few weeks, it's been the Taco Monday. Uh, yeah. because because the guests uh, on my show, which normally airs on Monday, 
uh, have been a little bit more tricky to, to get to, but, but appreciate you guys having me. I can't wait to get to it. Yeah, man. So, um, I want to just jump in on the Lakers then. Let's let's just because I know that that's what you talk about. Are you sure? Like, <laughs> well, what a great time to have Anthony on to after last night. <laughs> I mean, dude, last night's game is crazy. I mean, I literally it's like Sunday afternoon and it's not football season, and I'm thinking to myself, I got my Sundays free again. Like I get my life back. It's not football season. Lakers are playing in New Orleans at four o'clock in the afternoon, so I literally make my afternoon around watching this game. And the Lakers come out on fire. They're up like I want to say it was twelve zero before mm -hmm. uh, New Orleans ever even scored, they had a 60 to 40 lead deep into the second quarter. And then just tell me what you think. What happened in the third quarter in the second half to this Laker team again? Well, it's, it's the same story that it's, that's been all year where they recognize and they see what kind of basketball they should be playing. They should be getting out and switching and, and pressuring on the perimeter and getting out in transition and, and and scoring in that way because if they get into the half court at all as we saw in the second half of the yesterday's game and basically for all of the season they aren't a good enough half court team to execute at a high level so uh you know but still lebron prefers to operate in a slow kind of walk it up offense uh carmelo anthony prefers to operate in isolation and 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 so on and so forth so when frank leans more on the old guys they play this style of basketball that is not conducive to winning. And you'll see the giant swings where when they play the young guys, they get out and run. You see a great, not a great team, but a, a, a better team. And when they go back to the old guys and they slow it down a bunch, you see a one of the worst teams, honestly, in the NBA. Yeah, last night's game. Alex, I, I know you've kind of become the I'm not watching unless it's on Tuesday guy. Yeah. <laughs> because <laughs> because dude thanks it's just, for outing me well no but anthony it just becomes so frustrating well well anthony yeah. well you need to hear the background on all this maybe you put us all on the screen yeah. here's the background on this so browner here told alex he's not a real fan in november yeah mm. right because mm -hmm. he wasn't watching yeah. because these two knuckleheads were were basically throwing anthony davis down the toilet after losing one game to the milwaukee bucks which i understand like yeah, he didn't look great against Giannis, and he never really well, does we look correct. great against Giannis. But they were acting as if they just lost in the playoffs, not mm. a game in November. And I was trying to explain to them, it's November. I don't, you don't have to like take everything for what it is in November. It's a long season. Mm -hmm. And then I got called out for not being a real fan. So from that <laughs> moment forward, mm -hmm. I watched every single game until about mm, February. When they quit, I quit. Yeah, that's the way I looked at it. <laughs> no, I had a I had a I had a whole podcast where I basically told fans, hey, stop going to games, stop watching, you know, like just like like stop paying attention to this team. Cause like you're talking about, Alex, they they stopped trying for yeah. for like a solid month there. They went through a streak of like I think 15 games where they were down by at least double digits. Yeah. That's a LeBron with LeBron healthy. That was right. the case. They have uh they have not won consecutive games since January 7th. Um, which isn't great considering they're going to have to win two straight games to get out of the playing tournament. Uh, so but he, but they won three the games in quit, February. Though. He's the guy who quit. I think yeah. this idea that LeBron is like, look at the numbers he's putting up. He's almost 40. Look at it. Like he's the person who quit on the team. That's <laughs> what I find the most laughable about all of this. Yes, his numbers are great because he is an amazing player. But he is focused on chasing Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He don't give a damn about what happens to the Lakers as an organization from a playoff standpoint because he is scoring in a LeBron-centric only offense and Frank Vogel ain't got the, the stones to tell him to stop doing it and take him out of the game because all that matters to him is playing. I disagree. I so disagree. I huh. mean, look, I, I, I will, I'll agree that LeBron is chasing Kareem and that, mm -hmm. and that when the team – is as bad as this year has been. He's got, he's kind of got his own personal accolades in mind, but it's only because the team is so bad. In other words, no winning is he's not played with worse players. He's played on worse teams than no. this. That's Our debatable. Worst That's debatable dude. <laughs> Have you, let me ask. This, okay. This is the, the team he took, the team he took when you to the dude. NBA finals with the Cleveland Cavaliers was worse than this team. That team had Eric Snow on it, who couldn't shoot to save his life. Worse than Russell Westbrook. He that team had Larry Hughes before. on it. 
who couldn't guard anybody. Zodronis Ilgoskis couldn't move. Like, and uh, Drew Gooden was on that team. That team was awful. Anthony, awful. Once, you, once you start listing off the roster to this guy, he's clearly not one. Yeah, I'm like, like, so <laughs> last night the Lakers had – Stanley Johnson playing. Uh, he started, I believe. He mm-hmm. was not on a roster a month ago. Uh, Wendy Gabriel wasn't on a roster two weeks ago, and he's and he's now considered a key factor in their rotation. Mm-hmm. Uh, DJ Augustine was, I believe, in China at the beginning of the year, and and like he's 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 somebody who I think he played twelve or fifteen minutes last night. He might be the best shooter in the Lakers backcourt, like that. With Anthony Davis out, like you mentioned, uh, Zig Junis Olgowskis and not being able to move. Have you seen Dwight Howard? <laughs> Dw- <laughs> Dwight hasn't been able to move in 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 at least two calendar years. So, I, 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 it's close. But if we're talking about over the course of a twenty year period, this is either the worst or the second worst roster that Re- LeBron has ever had. Like I, I Scott, I, I think you kind of hit on an important point here. LeBron has seen more basketball at a higher level than any of us ever will. And he, maybe anyone ever. Right. Ev- absolutely. And he is, he's probably sitting there saying, look, I know a bad basketball team when I see one or I see one that I w- is not going to compete. So I may as well pursue Kareem for the last month or so of the season, try to stay as healthy as possible and have one last hurrah, one last chance at it after this offseason when the Lakers hopefully are able to trade or get rid of uh, Russ however they have to. Well, you you said something really interesting there. We're talking to Anthony Irwin. He runs all the podcasting for the SB Nation website, silverscreenandroll.com, which is dedicated to the Lakers. So this guy is just fixated on and, and covers the Lakers every day. You said stay healthy. So again, LeBron, first it's the knee. Then last night he twists an ankle. And after the game, they asked him about the ankle. He's like, oh man, it's, it's terrible. It's terrible. I'm yeah. like, I'm like, it is because you you played really well. We shot really well. He he said, he said, you know, one of the things you can really watch for with LeBron is uh the amount of free throws that he shoots. And I, I think all of the free throws that he shot in the second half were results of technical fouls. So he wasn't getting by anybody, he wasn't uh able to explode to the basket. Uh he had that dunk on Kevin Love a few games ago. And like that's that's LeBron when he is at his you know most athletic and and at this stage of his career anyway. And last night he wasn't able to get by anybody. And and like New Orleans has a lot of lengthy kind of quicker wings that they can throw in front of him too. It's a, it's a tough matchup even if he is healthy. But you combine that with the turned ankle and a knee that had a softball sized bursitis sack on the back of it. Uh, uh you know about a a month or half a month ago. He's just not. He's he said earlier this season he's not going to be healthy until he's able to have a month or so to just kind of recover, and and yeah. So you combine everything and 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 look, I I, I don't think it, you know anybody of his stature getting paid the amount of money that he's getting paid should quit on a season, but uh, you know with Anthony Davis out and hopefully hopefully he's able to come by come back this week sometime. Uh, that's what Aaron said um, on on the hook on Friday is that the Lakers are kind of hoping that uh, AD is about a week away. So if he's able to come back and LeBron is is relatively healthy, then then maybe you see an up in the defensive in- intensity. But like last night, LeBron was guarding guarding Herb Jones, <laughs> and Herb Jones was just kind of wandering the three point line, asked, wondering at some point, hey, it. Is anybody going to guard me? Because he just had wide open three pointer after wide open three pointer after wide open three pointer, and and like to to uh, to the point made earlier, it was like, yeah, he's 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 pursuing Kareem, and and that's the only side of the court. Yeah, that's what it looks like. He's great on one end of the court, and he just looks kind of apathetic on the other. So Browner here, he looks old on the other end of the court. Absolutely. That's what he looks. He looks he looks mid career on offense. He looks 39 on defense. <laughs> so Browner here is one of the guys. I know there's there's plenty of people that still say this. I don't believe it for a second that the Lakers can make noise if they make it to the playoffs. Mm-hmm. I won't even ask you that question because I don't <laughs> I don't even ask you that question because I know what you think, Anthony. Yeah. I will ask you this. Do you think they will make the play in? I said a couple weeks ago that I didn't think so. Um I you know, and, and the Lakers since then haven't really given me much reason to think they will. They sit one loss ahead of the the San Antonio Spurs right now. Who, granted, 
they have incentive to they don't they they don't need to make the play in. They can be in the lottery and they're going to walk away. Now, if you make the play in and you don't make the playoffs, uh, you remain in the lottery and you, and you get to maintain some of that math or whatever. But uh, but the Spurs have right. been playing better basketball of late. They have an easier schedule uh, over the last I think eight or nine games of of their season than the Lakers have in the remaining eight games of their season. There's a lot of teams out there who are going to be playing the Lakers who want to have a part in ruining, like the keeping them out of the, the, the play, the playing tournament. Greg Popovich of all people would love to, to knock the Lakers out of the play in tournament. So, you know, organizationally, it's going to be really difficult for San Antonio uh, to tank. I, I just, I, I said, uh, you know, Harrison and I did a show, I think it was about three weeks ago. And I told him at that time, I would have been surprised if the Lakers made it into the plane. That was that's about as far as I could go. And then a week or so after that, I just said, yeah, no, they're not making it. They, 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 <laughs> <laughs> I, I just don't see it. Dude, I just it's one of the things where for the longest time I on the podcast was like, can they just try? Like, can they yeah. just make it look like they're trying? And now that they are trying. I kind of I tweeted last night. They're still not that good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like it's like great, yeah. they're trying, but they're still yeah. not that good. Any sign if a team fights back, which most teams do, they just kind of wilt. Under but that's the but that's what Russell Westbrook said weeks ago, though. Let just me real quick, that, yeah. Russell Westbrook said weeks ago in a post-game press conference. The scouting report, I'm I'm paraphrasing, but I'm pretty close. He said they just have to try. Right. The scouting report on us is is that when you when you kind of give it back to us, when you don't lay down and die when you're not intimidated by all of our careers, when, when that happens, that's when teams beat us. The, and I really think this, because we talked about this early in the year. Remember the game early in the year against Detroit? What was that kid's name that stood up to LeBron? What was that kid's name? Does anybody remember Isaiah, that guy's name? Isaiah Stewart. Isaiah Stewart. Never heard of that guy in my life, mm -hmm. right? Big Stu. You would have thought that guy would have like just, hey, I'm sorry, LeBron. Jeez, I'm the king. I'm, 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 I'm sorry. You know, instead, he got right back in LeBron's face. And at that moment, in my opinion, the respect factor or the fear factor for LeBron and the Lakers pff, out the window at that moment. Just my own opinion. I think the Thunder did yeah. it first. There was there was a few teams. The Suns were clowning the Lakers there for a while. Uh, yeah, the, yeah, the, the Suns were first. Memphis, well, the, the Thunder his, were the first know. bad team to start clowning the Lakers. <laughs> yeah. You know? Right. Yeah. Well, that's that's, that's the key there too. I think that's a great point. Is that you know the Suns clown everybody this year because they're just really freaking good. But mm -hmm. bad teams this season and young players this season, no name guys are just going out of their way to. Ooh, I have Carmelo Anthony in, in isolation. This will be fun. Yeah. <laughs> ooh, mm -hmm. Russell Westbrook is is about to but shoot. Wait. I can walk away from this guy and completely disrespect his ability to shoot. That that sounds great. I'll go viral for that. Yeah. And everybody's been we looking are, that. We are talking about them though. Missing a gigantic piece of their offense, and they're, they're probably, quite frankly, honestly, their most important defensive player. The oh, idea yeah, that, easily. The idea that one player makes such a massive difference in this sport just simply isn't seen because he's not there. And so we're judging it because LeBron is so great. We're assuming Anthony Davis being out doesn't matter. But what we should now be able to tell any individual person viewing the Lakers is Anthony Davis is far more important to this team than anyone actually realized until he was gone for such a long stretch. And we saw LeBron do Herculean acts and still get nothing to show for it mm -hmm. other than the, the pursuit of Kareem's record. And so when you throw Anthony Davis back in there, I think the attitude will change. I think the energy will change. And that's why I still believe if you get them in a 1-8 matchup against the Suns, the Suns may talk and do a lot of dancing. But when a playoff series happens and it's LeBron and AD, they they don't match up well against I, them. I don't, but I don't know how we could ever count on AD to stay healthy. That's but that's fair and true. Yeah. I'm it's, not I'm not saying that that's false. That's true. And you're and you're expecting somebody at that point who has missed roughly half the season to immediately dive in into it, like immediately dive into play in playoff basketball against the one seed that has heard all season. Hey, you guys don't want to face the Lakers. You don't want to face the Lakers. And like yeah. eventually they're going to get a little annoyed of it too. And and we'll see how that looks. But I, I it wasn't think like Anthony I, Davis was tearing it up this season when he was healthy either. He looked he looked a little better when he got back from the 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 the, the, the first injury uh because he really focused on slimming down. Like for some reason, so there's two lines of thought. There are some people in the Lakers organization who think that AD just came in out of shape. 
And then there are other people on who are who are more on Anthony Davis' side who said, well, he thought he was going to play a lot more center, so he tried to bulk up. And uh, the thing that I the thing that I makes me lean more towards the former there that I think he just kind of came in a little out of shape is his shooting was abysmal this season to start, and it, that has nothing to do with bulking up. Like I've never seen you know, muscle mass have that kind of an effect on, on shooting ability. Uh, and, and I just think, you know, and, and this is something that the Lakers are a little concerned about in the post LeBron era where it's just Anthony Davis is he won a championship and, you know, has, has, has really enjoyed that chant, that post championship <laughs> life. And, uh, you know, I, I think I said that it, with regular along like, a while ago, I was like, is Anthony Davis the guy that wants the ring and now he's got the ring? Or is he yeah. Anthony Davis the kind of guy that wants to be an all-time great and have multiple rings? Right. So well, far, we, I think he's kind of cool with one. We we know that he doesn't he's not really interested in looking like an all-time great because if he was interested in, in being an all-time great, Alex, he would play the position that he's best at all the time. He would be a center. Where he has the most yeah. advantage. Yeah. He'd be a center. He would always be down there, and he'd yeah. be and he'd be a perennial MVP and and defensive player of the year type of. Uh, he didn't that. He'd be in that conversation every year, but he, but he's not. He, he wants might he argue, prefers to play power forward. Right. He might argue that he's already an all time great because he was on the seventy fifth team, which you know I don't think he belonged <laughs> on. I mean, seriously, like no. there. I think yeah. you guys are bringing up a lot of really interesting points, Anthony. It is great to talk to you, man. And and you know we needed to to get into some Laker basketball today because me and Brown are here. We're so passionate about Will Smith smacking Chris Rock that we spent more time on that. <laughs> Half the we, show today. Yeah, than, than we did on the Padres, yeah. the Dodgers, the Lakers, the NFL, whatever else. Anthony, it is great to have you on the show for the first time. I hope you come back, man. Anytime, guys. Anytime. There he is, Anthony Irwin. He runs all the podcasting from silverscreenandroll.com. Just kind of hanging out with us this afternoon, talking some NBA, talking some Lakers. Stick around. The highlight of the day is right around the corner. And let's see if we can get to all the stuff we haven't gotten to. This is Kaplan and crew from the Seven Mile Casino Studios. All right, great friends. This is Kaplan and crew with Grande and the Brown Man from the Seven Mile Casino Studios, sevenmilecasino.com. Fellas, um, this show today has, and I kind of knew it might be like this. I blame you. Yeah. I accept them. I applaud you, Thank sir. You. I you. applaud you. I don't blame you. I applaud you for your Thank performance you. today. You had the integrity and the intestinal the fortitude to speak yeah. about what was on your mind and what was going on yeah. in the public stream. Mr. Jokey Joke, conspiracy theory, Q over here. Think everything is yeah. made up. Think nothing's real. Think the moon's made of cheese. <laughs> well, I know we landed on it, Browner. <laughs> well, uh, well, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> well, I think... If landed on you, mean in Arizona? Yeah, I think for me, I, I really and I feel. By the way, I, I feel a hundred times better. I mean, I could not wait to get on the air this afternoon because I really, really, I'm not joking. I don't know what my problem was. I was freaking legit upset about this Will Smith Chris Rock thing. I, I was, I was, I'm Team Chris Rock, and I was very, very upset for Chris Rock, and I freaking mm -hmm, despise too. Will Smith. Like I was not like a Will Smith lover. And I wasn't a Will Smith hater. In fact, my favorite Will Smith movie was the one um, where he's like. Wild, the, Wild West? No, 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 no. Not that one. <laughs> Men in Black? I Robot? Nope. No, no. It was the one. Independence nope, Day? Nope. It was none of those cheesy yeah. action Hancock. adventures. Gemini Man. No, I don't know any of these movies. Mm. Um, Pursuit of Happiness. I, um, Pursuit of Happiness. Yeah. Oh. That's the one. That was the worst movie. No, no, no. That's the one where he's like the homeless <laughs> dude who's trying to make it his way yeah. into corporate that America. Terrible. No, it was a great movie. That was terrible well now i agree with you it's terrible <laughs> yesterday His whole imdb uh filmography is off Flush it down the toilet yeah like i went from being a, like i'm kind of like i'm vanilla when it comes to will smith i liked him as the french pr fresh prince of bel-air i like certain rap songs miami getting jiggy with it i'll never get jiggy with it again never happened no jig mm -mm -mm. you know so like he's never really mm -mm. done anything that i was like damn except fresh prince of bel-air there's ever since then, he's never done anything where I was like, that was great. Yeah. I yeah. can't think of like you know, everything he's been in. That's good. But like, is, is Hancock an all time superhero movie? No, no, it's good. It good? Yeah. Is good, I robot it... like one of the best no. blockbusters of all time? No, no. You know I mean? Like it was wild, wild, like wild, wild west was, was huge, but was it really, was it good? No one really thought it was good. No, it wasn't good. You know, I, was like, movie I said, I liked, what was it called? Pursuit of happiness. Pursuit of happiness. There's a scene. I've, I've told you guys a scene before. Where, the concussion movie he was in was okay. Okay, I haven't seen concussion. I never saw it. 
I never saw it. Look. But I'll the, the the pursuit of happiness was was this one scene in particular that really got me where he um he's out no and bad boys was great. Bad, bad boys bad was boys great. was an awesome movie, but that's Martin Lawrence too. You know, Martin Lawrence gets True. 50% Thanks. of that. You know, Thanks. anyway, whatever. I, I'm now anti Will Smith. I'll never see another movie of his. I'll never be a fan of his. I'll never Ooh, like him again. I take it back. What? I am legend was pretty damn good. I am legend. I am legend was pretty damn good. It was a good movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm like going through his got it. His thing now. All right. Well, here's the thing. Give here's the thing. One. The show started today. Oh, there's a bad boys four coming. No way. I won't Did see that pre production. Not now. I, it ain't. See, I will not see no, that. Not, not now. Yeah, even Martin Lawrence, mm -hmm. Martin Lawrence would be like, I'm not working with him because who knows? He may just slap mm -hmm. me. Because I'm friends with Chris Rock. I, I didn't watch Bad Boys for Life. I only watched Bad Boys one and probably two. I saw. I, I saw. There's one in Miami where Blake they like Blake. where they stole uh, Dan Reno's Cadillac. Is that not two. one? Two. Oh, is that two? No, that's two. I, I, Daniel yeah. Daniel Daniel Tapia. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway, the show started with all this emotion about Will Smith, Chris Rock. What happened last night? Who was? Who wasn't watching? Where they found the information? Was it real? Was it fake? And I, I feel a hundred times better now at the end of the show than I did at the beginning of the show. But that all being said, we wound up missing a million things. So here's what I'm going to try and do. I want to get to the highlight of the day in this segment. And I want to see how much of what we planned for the show we can actually get to. We definitely planned on talking Lakers. We got a little bit of that in with Anthony Irwin. Uh, we definitely planned on talking Padres, which we got in some of that. And we, uh, I feel like we've missed everything. So here it goes. You ready? In order. I'm going to try and make these all quick. You know, this is going to be like pardon the interruption style where we're going to put a clock on this. You ready to go? I don't have a clock. Mm -hmm. Go. All right. It's very important <laughs> that we start off with this. The Brown Facts Hot Take Tournament is underway and we're headed towards the championship. Final Just, four. Right. Tomorrow. Just like the final four, you got Kansas and Villanova and you got North Carolina and Duke. All the blue bloods all kind of rose to the top. Well, the same is happening here in the Brown Facts hot take bracket. Alex, could you put up on the screen for everybody where we stand and, and where we're headed from here? Yes. So we have these matchups of the Elite Eight that we are is closing today. So by the time you guys are watching this, you'll have a few hours to go. Number 11, Russell Westbrook or oh, Russell Wilson is the fourth best quarterback in the AFC West is beating Guac Sucks. That's too bad because if Guac sucks loses, I need to keep and that Russell alive. Wilson is the fourth best quarterback in the AFC mm -hmm. West wins. Um, we well, don't believe that. So right, we don't want Browner to give that one up because we'll have the whole football season to kind of jerk around about. Remember Browner, you said that Russell Wilson was the fourth best quarterback in the AFC West, and when Russell Wilson and the Broncos wind up winning the AFC West this year, I mean, I'm just kind of throwing that out there. Then we could throw this I mean, in Browner's Derek face. Derek Carr has 25 interceptions because all he's trying to do is throw it deep to Devontae Adams. That'll be funny. Dude, I really believe that Guac is awesome and that should win. Uh, it's probably not, though. So here yes. uh, we'll continue with number 15. There's no such thing as coconut water. Running away with it as penile and penal are the same thing. Yeah, uh, penile and penal are very, very different. Although penile and penal might have some, you know, there's some commonalities, at least when you're in a person. Right. Right. But, very close, very, very But close. there's no such Anybody thing as coconut water is so far from the truth that it's winning easily. Right. Gosh, that sucks. That's also, by the way, not a real thing. I there's also no such thing as had, coconut water. I don't want to fight about it because we don't have that much time. Scott wants to talk about everything. But never mind. <laughs> so how do you get orange juice, Browner? When you slice an orange, mm -hmm. is there juice just there? Mm -hmm. oh, you yeah, got to like squeeze it juice. or juice it. Right. If you you have to juice Alex, the fruit. If you cut an orange, if you cut, go ahead. I'm listening. An to apple. I'm apple to, juice. You cut mm -hmm. an apple. There's no juice. Mm -hmm. You have to if juice you... it to get the juice. Okay. Okay. A watermelon. Let me ask you. Slice if you, that if, easy. No if juice. You cut a, if you cut a coconut open, mm -hmm. water okay. comes out. That's the difference. juice comes no, out. Water. You have to juice. Juice. Something to get juice. A coconut simply has water in it. It's called coconut water. So so if you cut an orange open and anything comes out, that's orange water? Then nothing comes out. No, I how many oranges have you cut? A lot. How many apples have you cut? Because right. due to my recent lifestyle, I've cut a lot of all those right. things. Mm -hmm. Juice comes out. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. of an apple. If you cut it, if you cut it at once you pierce the skin of an apple, 
there is residue. Oh, so is that is that apple water, Scott? See, this is what this is why this man he he just right. he he. He, he may not be able to say everything it. till the death. I know. Wait, yeah, I just can't answer the question. Is there apple water? No. But that's not juice. It's not even apple juice either. No. It's neither. Neither. Not, it's it's apple dryness. It's coming from the Number apple. Number five, Ryan Weathers is the Padres' best pitcher. Also <laughs> running away with it's okay for adult men to bring a glove to a pro game. Mm-hmm. That was obviously one of the worst takes, I'm if okay not the worst takes of 2021. I'm, I'm okay with that. That one's going to win, unfortunately, because it's such a terrible take. I'm okay with that. And then the last one here. Curve is. Oh, this one might, though. This one's going to hurt you. Curve is a great cologne. No, this will hurt. Oh, this will hurt bad. Waffles are better than pancakes. Uh, yeah. That's Cur- in my car right now. See, That'll hurt so bad. Cur- curve is a great cologne is a really good one for Browner to give up on. That's a good one. Yeah. Okay. So, That'll all right. Hurt. So here's what I'll say to everybody. Go to Cited.co. That's our website, Cited.co, or download the Cited mobile app for Apple or for Google. Make sure you follow us at Kaplan and crew and vote on the Browner Brown facts, hot takes, because this crew right here, the ones that we just looked at, those four, they're going to close, and then we're going to be down into our Final four will be quick. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, final four. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, championship. Mm-hmm. We'll have okay. a winner by Tuesday, just like the NCAA will have a winner. Tuesday of next week, Browner will give up one phrase that was right. so outrageous. So we need you to vote. And we've got nice votes, uh, got good, good vote counts, got... Uh, you know, I can see that there's the Flames uh, logo. It means that we're trending. So that's cool. But we need you to get on Cited.co or download the Cited app for Apple or for Google and follow Kaplan and crew and vote on the Brown Facts Challenge. All right, let's keep things rolling because I said I wanted to try and get into as much as I could. All right, we talked about the Padres making a move. This happened early this morning. I thought I missed it over the weekend. But the Padres make a move. They trade to get an outfielder from the Dodgers. They don't give up very much, just like some 11th round pick. Is that how the story goes, Alex? Mm-hmm. So let's take a look at, well, here's the new left fielder, or maybe new left fielder. Ooh, he. Matt Beatty from the Dodgers. 234 at-bats last year, 270 average, hit four home runs. Uh, when you look at Jerickson Pof- Profar from last year, he had over 100 more at-bats, and he had the same number of home runs and the same number of RBIs. So Matt Beatty's all of a sudden got himself a chance to find himself playing in left field for the Padres. But speaking of that, I see our boy Kevin Acey has put out for everybody the projected opening day roster. Can we uh, can we take a look at the him and AJ Casavell did it? But I figured you'd like to dive into Acey's instead. Whatever. I mean, I hate I hate to give Acey all this you know on air prop, but no, you uh, eh, it's all right. Yeah, it's all good. This is what it could look like. We'll see. All right. Let's take a look here. We know the rotation. Clevenger, Darvish, Musgrove, and Snell. Nick Who's Martinez. this guy? My bad. I missed the Z there. Nick Martini. Nick Martinez, the guy yeah. they signed to. Shout out. Mm-hmm. Um, I really feel like that. I really feel like that's going to be the swing position, this Nick, this Nick Martinez position. It's going to be the swing position. Yeah. I think you're going to see Paddock in there. I definitely know you're going to see Weathers in there. You're going to see uh, cool. uh, Lamette in there. I think, yeah, I think that. I Come think on, McKenzie. Swing position. Come on, man. I think the big one here Please, is that on, he man. has C.J. Abrams in the open roster. That's yeah, where else he gonna be? Uh uh-uh. uh, all talent, all hands on deck right now. We need yeah. to win games immediately. All right. I don't think he'll be a starter, but to have him on your roster should be fine. I'm okay with right. that. I'm all okay right. with that. Um, speaking of the Padres, I saw this report this past weekend that the Padres expect to break the attendance record. Now you got to go back to 2004 when the Padres had over three million people come through the turnstiles. They were good. They weren't great, but it was a brand new stadium and everybody wanted to be a part of it. Everybody wanted to see it for the first time. Mm -hmm. So there was that honeymoon period. It has taken 20 years, not 20, but 18 to where the Padres think that they're trending towards breaking the all time attendance record. Why? Two years ago, the Padres were in the postseason. Last year, they had this monster Mm -hmm. disappointment. They've done a lot of great things to the ballpark Mm -hmm. to make the entertainment experience that much better. And probably number one of those things was making the Mm -hmm. baseball team better. Now, can the team perform because but in the second half of the season if they stink like they did last year i believe a lot of the honeymoon excitement is going away color me shocked Mm -hmm. because remember last Mm -hmm. year they raised ticket prices season tickets or ticket prices by 20 percent for a Mm -hmm. team that finished well below 500 so to already sell 19,000 i guess what they say tickets very shocked very surprised maybe scott maybe scott why we're in the minority yeah maybe I don't know why y'all shocked about this. I told y'all. People are fired up about this team. They thought they believe like I believe last year. Injuries happened. We had enough to win. Pitching rotation fell out of line because of injuries. And so, therefore, injuries got in the way. 
So they brought everybody back because everybody likes the people on this team in particular, with the exception of Tommy Pham. They brought everybody back because the fan base likes everybody on this roster. Yeah, people love no, him. No, they don't they like Eric Hosmer. Will Myers. Yeah, they don't love him. They don't love yeah. him all. Mm -hmm. people, people love, love people like Will people Myers. They don't like Eric Hosmer. They, Chris they, maybe they people bought all these tickets with the idea that before the lockout, there was all these rumors like, oh, we're going to trade Hosmer. We're going to trade Myers. We're going to get Freddie no, Freeman. Not, we're going to no, get Nick Castellanos. We're going to get all these guys. Do that. I'm going to go buy these season tickets. And then the lockout hits. And you're like, yo, what? And then you come out and you're like, wait, who? Matt Beatty. Right, not one position. Luke, Luke Boyd, Boyd. Where, where'd he come from? I mean, I get it, DH. but that's not Nick Castellanos. That's not Freddie Freeman. I'm just saying. All right, you sound like a hater, right? I'm not excited. I'm a non excited. Hater. All right, well, go to go to the Angels game then. Both of you, no, bye. You <laughs> Post All Star break. Man, go to Angels game. Hey, this segment is being brought to us by Mountain Trust Mortgage and Realty Services. 858-376-1299. 858-376-1299. Our man Gary Cooper is waiting for your call. He's got a really strong and very qualified opinion about what's going on in the housing market and increasing uh, of, of interest rates. You need him. You got him. Gary Cooper. 858-376-1299. And this segment is also being brought to us by our friends at West Coast BBQ Shop. West Coast BBQ Shop dot com. Twenty three thirty Proctor Valley Road down in Chula Vista, Browner, there is some talk of you going <laughs> down there on Thursday he loves to do a broadcast thing. from down there because now what you've got is, is you look at the final four, you got Villanova. So I was thinking Brian could do up some cheesesteaks. You got Duke versus North Carolina. So maybe there's like some Carolina barbecue in there, you know, some, some barbecue tri-tip or maybe like some, uh, Carolina, some Carolina Reaper hot sauce. Okay. Yeah. Right. And then, uh, who am I missing from the final four? Kansas. Um, so I don't know what, what are they, what are they doing? Kansas? Oh, steaks. So I'm Does thinking Kansas do barbecue so, too. So, um, yeah. Yes, they do. Kansas yeah. City barbecue. Yes, they well, do. but also isn't Kansas, let isn't me, Kansas City known for steaks as well? I don't know. No, no, no. that I know of. Have we spoken to Brian about making him cook? I have spoken to Brian. He, I wanted to do something on Friday, but he's going out of town. Oh, you he did. He wants to do something on Thursday. Hey, why don't you go, Scott? Oh. Um, I don't because you were, you were supposed to go, but then you ended up going to the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. And it's, I think mm -hmm. it's your turn to go. Oh, really? Uh, maybe it is my turn. Then it's time for you to get out with the people. Mm. Tommy, well, I'm going to be. I'm going to be. I'm going to. I'm going to be at I Thrive MD tomorrow evening, 6 p.m. Oh, in fact, Alex, you're. Yeah, Alex, you're <laughs> not going too. to I Thrive MD tomorrow. Why don't you go down there on Thursday? Uh, Browner, you want to do all the work on Thursday? Yeah, that's why. Not really. Okay. All right. All right. Let's keep rolling though, uh, because so one of you two is going to be there on Thursday. Uh, well, we'll figure it out. We'll talk to Brian okay. off the air. All right. So look. So um, speaking of of going down to see Brian on Thursday, it's all because the Final Four is now set. Scott wants to Will Smith me now for bringing that up. I don't want to Will Smith you. I don't, I'm, I don't, I'm not a violent man. I'm unlike Will Smith. I'm not a violent person. All right. Show everybody where we are here in the NCAA basketball tournament. You know, St. Peter's was the story of the weekend. I was watching that game uh, through the first half and then it became pretty so obvious. It was not competitive at all. So, so here you go. You got Duke versus North Carolina. Uh, on the other side, you got Kansas versus Villanova. And ultimately, that's what the NCAA tournament does. It weeds out. Even though you got Cinderella stories, it weeds them out, and then you get to the end. And even if a North Carolina is an eight seed, look where they are. I mean, just reputation-wise, history-wise. I mean, take a look at what you're looking at here on the screen, and mm -hmm. you'll see, I mean, how, how great these programs have all been. St. Peter's did its job. Right. They kept you entertained. They nobody wants you in the final and they bowed out. Right. They, no one yeah. does. No one does. No one in St. Peter wants St. Peter in the Final Four. But I will tell you this. <laughs> Yeah. That Duke North Carolina game might yeah. be the highest watched college basketball game in the history of sports. It maybe. might be. It might be. I mean, I know people love that rivalry, and mm -hmm. and and Coach it is Coach K's last game. Yep, it's so set up for Coach K. This is all fixed. Oh, ah, this is this is you as know, fake. Oh, as, oh, this, no, this is as fake as Will Smith hitting Chris Rock. That's how oh, fake this, this is whole so final fixed, four is. dude. So fixed. He's Come never on, once played North Carolina in the tournament. Never once. Yep. And now here they are in yep. his final, final four. Mm -hmm. and then you do know up. that all they had to play all these games to get here, right? Sure. Play, manipulate, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> and then okay. he gets to go play Kansas, the team that he beat for his first national championship. And then and then Jim they, Nance they is going to give Coach K his tie instead of a player this year. It's mm -hmm. all set up. Duke's going to win this whole thing. I would bet my house. No, I wouldn't. But I would still bet that Duke <laughs> is going to win this whole thing. You bet your condo? Yeah. 
<laughs> put some money, put some money, on, put some money on it, man. Put some money on it. I should have, I should have put money it's yesterday on, on North Carolina. I mean, it was so obvious that St. Peter's was eventually going to run out of gas. Oh yeah. You know, if ever there was a time where they were going to just get worked, yesterday would have been it. Mm -hmm. that, they didn't have the horses. Wow. All right, let's do this. Let's get to the highlight of the day because I'm trying to get through all this stuff. We'll never get there. Let's get to today's highlight of the day, man. It's time for the highlight of the day, man. Do you want to get high, man? I'm just really. Hi. The promo code at Tory Holistics is women. So when you go to KathleenCrew.com, you click that Tory banner, you shop around, and you spend 75 bucks, you put promo code women at checkout, and you get 20% off. And you've only got a few more days because once the calendar turns to April, you'll have a new promo code. So women. It worked for me, by the way, on Friday. Nice. Great. Were you able to find any of the HVGC products in Tory Holistics on Friday? I don't know if you asked for them by name, but um, last time I was there, last two times. Sold out. Completely sold out. Hellman Valley Growers Company, hvgcompany.com. You can find out about the uh, former Marine special operators who are now in the cannabis industry because their goal is to help other veterans deal with their PTSD issues, not with prescription pills, but by using cannabis. Now, by the way, I just want to throw in one last plug here. We've got this new uh, podcast we're doing with Tori Holistics. It's called Holistics Highlights. And we interview interesting yeah. people from around the world of cannabis, how they get into it. We interviewed this woman last week. This was my favorite interview so far. She had a company called Dr. Raw. They changed the name to Dr. May. And now they are just crushing it. All female owned and operated. And I wind up telling the story in this podcast of what happened as I was trying to cross the border from the U.S. into Mexico last week when I had practically an, an entire Tory mule. Holistic dispensary in my suitcase. And I tell that story on the Holistic Highlight podcast. You should check it out. Grande? Highlight of the day. Yeah, I was going to play something about a, a TikTok that, or a tweet that went viral, but it's too long. It's about uh, two minutes. So um, I guess I'll just go with with something that, that Browner's going to hate and say that the United States are likely now qualified for the World Cup in Qatar. They beat Panama yesterday 5-1. They are in second place in the group. Canada clinched their first spot in the World Cup since 1986. So Canada is the best team in the group. U.S. second. I think the U.S. has to lose like 5 nothing to Costa Rica on Wednesday to not make this thing. So even then, they would finish in fourth, which is still likely get them into the World Cup. But top three get in. The U.S., they play on Wednesday against Costa Rica at 6 o'clock, and they'll get their ticket punched to Qatar. Wow. I thought you were going to tell us about F1. Don't we have like a really good player finally? Three goals yesterday. Don't we have like a for the U.S. My team, Mexico, is struggling. We're yeah, we're in third fun. place. We're tied at points with the U.S., but damn, we can't score to save our lives. <laughs> My goodness, we, we beat Honduras yesterday or El Salvador, whoever. Uh, what happened to, to uh, not on the team and They need someone like it. They need a poacher. He's not, he's playing for the Galaxy. That's where he's at. All right, we got to go. We, we got to go because Browner Law had taken over from here. I can't wait to hear what Lawhead thinks about what happened with this Will Smith, Chris Rock thing. So radio listeners, mm -hmm. top of the hour, 6 o'clock, you're getting Browner and Lawhead for an hour. Radio listeners, we got a peace out. Everybody else will have a separate finish for you on the podcasting side. See you tomorrow, radio listeners. All right, fellas, wrapping things up here on a Monday and what uh, is a good start to the week. But um, <clears throat> statement from you. the Academy. Yeah, because I, I I saw something on um, CNN oh. while we were on the air. Breaking news. Apparently, there was a whole big brouhaha amongst the Academy about what to do about Will Smith. What what, do you, what is the news you have? Statement here, from the Academy. The Academy condemns the actions of Mr. Smith at last night's show. Mm -hmm. We have officially started a formal review to find out that it's fake around the incident and we'll explore further action and consequences in accordance with our bylaws, standards of conduct and California law. This is what's going to happen. I'm telling no, you, they're going to take the award no, away not. from him after review. Watch. And then they're going to get so much backlash about Roman Polanski that they're just going to have to give it nah. back. Polanski. Yeah. Roman Polanski made this movie called The Pianist, and he is a child predator. Oh. And when this was found out, they still gave him the gave him the award, even though he fled the country. Yeah, I don't think so, they're going to take the award away from Will Smith. That's my prediction. I, I know we have. So here's here's where we'll we won't agree, Browner, because we we did have a lot of similar feelings about the issue. I don't mm -hmm. think that the Academy will take the award from him. You know, he performed in the movie. It was voted on. Um, mm -hmm. and, and, and we talked about, you know, the, the black part of this whole situation, 
uh, where one black man hits another black man on national TV on a show that's being produced by a black man where he's going to win an award about portraying a black man. So Mm -hmm. I don't think the Academy will take the award away from Will Smith. I think they will have, this is the first statement, but I think there'll be others as well. Um, Next year, the way I was, I was hearing this this morning that when you win best actor, the following year, you deliver the best actress award. So I would say that that Will Smith's punishment will ultimately be that he will not be invited next year to five year suspension. I mean, who knows? Maybe that's Dude, it's Kevin gonna be Hart hilarious made. when this now Kevin Hart made gay jokes in 2010. They wouldn't even let him host it. It's gonna be hilarious when this comes out to be fake and they mm-hmm. both get nominated for an Emmy <laughs> for best acting in a television show. All right, make this prediction. Yeah, yeah. Make this prediction. You ready? Will Chris Rock publicly uh, condemn no 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 more <laughs> like more like publicly accept an apology from will smith God, i hope not see that's what i'm hoping for also i think he I, I think he will i think he will publicly accept the apology but he's going to burn him down on i hope stage. that happens see now that's I, what i'm hoping for i, I hope he I'm doesn't hoping, I'm acknowledge he this forever and just burns him on stage yeah right i hope that that chris rock never ever ever takes an apology from will smith never accepts an apology you mentioned it earlier today, Alex, when Oprah invites them both to sit down because now Oprah's got to she got to sit in between the two of them. Mm-hmm. OK, I got mm-hmm. I got to work this out. Black, like Black America cannot have two of the most famous, wealthy people hitting each other on TV. We got to work this out. We got to have a love session. We got to come to Jesus, hug it out kind of deal. I hope that Chris Rock says no way. Because it's all in an effort to make Will Smith look good. It's not in an effort to make Chris right. Rock look good. I'm just trying to figure out where Jada and Will will sit down with. Who will they sit down with first? Because they're doing it. They might do it tomorrow. They might be. Do, oh. They might be recording it right now. All, bro, red table, red table, gonna be on Facebook yeah, tomorrow, it's, and it's gonna be some sappy ass story about all this other crap and blah blah blah. Well, I feel a hundred times better. I'm telling you right now, Alex, you laughed at me. You ridiculed me still. And I'm laughing louder and really ridiculing you more in my head than I did on the show. Yeah. Well, I just want you to know, like for me, my people, we felt the pain of this last night. What was that look Browner? Okay. I, 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 I agree. All right. I don't know who are my people are, but yeah. And like my people do, we just sit back and shake our head. Mm. Mm -hmm. All right, we got to go. We're back tomorrow. Peace out, everybody. Fuck (laughs) off, (laughs) man.